Yeah! Uncle No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Well, here we go all together, jumping into it. The final two weeks of the Bassmaster Elite Series for 2023. The Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain, a place that for decades has always had a star next to it on the schedules of pro bass anglers. This is a place that they want to be. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona and Z. Always huge anticipation coming to this place. Definitely, Tommy, and really looking at the start of the fourth quarter right now on the Bassmaster Elite Series. A lot on the line, Angler of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Classic Qualification, Requalification. Really, I think the two stories to watch starting out this morning right now, Tommy, is the first two days of this tournament. You better get your work done because this lake, if it is blowing out of the south or the north, straight up and down, it can get ugly. And we're going to see that later today into tomorrow morning. And really the other story is, and a lot of our viewers know this, in the state of New York, when you have high water conditions, largemouth always seem to play a major factor, especially on this lake. Will somebody not look at their depth finder chasing smallmouth and decide <laughs> to go south or way north chasing the largemouth? That'll be uh, yet to see because I don't think we have anybody on camera uh, fishing for largemouth this morning, but we'll see that later today. Yeah, we got a lot to look forward to during the course of this one. That issue right there is always playing big, especially more so this year, more so than ever. We welcome all of you here. Uh, I pulled you in a little early, Mark Zona, but we had to had to get your take I on liked it. it. But we welcome you also into the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie Moore, Mike Sukon, and Ronnie Moore, uh, Mark Zona alluded to it, a lot of things to decide in these last two weeks. Yeah, we talked about Angler of the Year being a one-point race. That's awesome to have it this tight late in the year. We have a couple guys in the 30 to 40 point range right behind it that could definitely put their name in the hat going into the St. Lawrence River. Rookie of the year, 20 points or so deciding that. Classic spots are at a premium and we know how Lake Champlain, Lake St. Clair and the St. Lawrence River all have such close weights every single day of competition. You could be just a pound off the pace and lose quite a bit of ground if you're trying to make the Bassmaster Classic. So we'll keep an eye out for that. All right, and Such, whose stories are you watching closely today? I'm watching all the point stories okay. to figure out if somebody's going to try to gain on our breakaway guys of uh, Cobb and Welcher. And somebody could. If those guys slip a little bit, there's plenty of guys right there. If they get a top 10, if they fish eight days, they could win this. AOY take it out from under their chins. All right. We're looking forward to that. We got, as we say, one of the greatest <laughs> fisheries. We only go to awesome fisheries with the occasional tough one thrown in there. And this is no, no uh, exception right here. Formerly a great lake because of its vastness. It's not anymore. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later, but huge, almost 500 square miles. Mark Zona Champlain is a monster to take on. It is. Minn Kota unlock the lake and a start down by Ticonderoga and work our way north because you get near Burlington and see Mallets Bay right there and really look for taking a peek at our maps this morning, about 125 miles long from Mallets Bay up north. There's our takeoff right there. Plattsburgh, beautiful, beautiful venue for the week here on the Bassmaster Elite Series as you get into the Inland Sea up towards Missacoy Bay and really look for a lot of the action from our takeoff north early this morning, Tommy Sanders. Well, I tell you what, as we say, we're getting into the last two weeks of the season here. Your season, your success is always defined by consistency. Whether you make it to the classic, consistency. Whether you go or are able to be an elite next year is based on consistency, and it all comes into stark, stark focus on this week. And Progressive Elite Series Angler of the Year points are crucial here. We have a juicy, juicy race at the top there with Brandon Cobb and Kyle Welcher and uh, three or four other anglers who can definitely make a giant move on those two during the course of this day. Brandon Cobb, though, what, what a season he has had. Despite one terrible stumble, he has been had five top fives if you count the Bassmaster Classic. What is he thinking about as he takes on today? I, I really don't think so. Like, the way, the, I don't really fish any differently because of points, because the way, the way fishing is, everybody thinks we find a thousand different fish and we're like, oh, these are bigger but riskier. Oh, these are little. And uh, it's not really like that. I'm just fishing for the fish I found. I mean, if I was in 80th in AOI, if I'm leading, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to fish for the fish I found and hope it works out. That's, uh, that's all you can do. We got to go to work. I'm going to have fun, but I got I got to go to work. Like, we got to make this happen. There's opportunity here. We got we to gotta take advantage of it. So. Very, very excited. Got to calm down on the first bike. Calm down. 
Don't get too crazy. Don't, you know, light line, got to ease into them. So hopefully we get a bite, you know, that's the thing. Hopefully we get a bite. Don't want to count my chickens before they hatch, but I'm ready. Ron Schmidt looking like a man who's ready to start wheeling and dealing on this day for sure. He's the man to watch. Take a look at our last outing here on Lake Champlain. It was Brian Schmidt with his first of two elite victories. Exactly right, Tommy. 2021 here on Lake Champlain, mixing it up, smallmouth and largemouth, and said really his attack here on day number one does not want to go to his largemouth. Said I'd rather wait till Saturday and possibly Sunday to lean on those largemouth. Really going to focus on smallmouth the majority of day one. Said he's definitely got a lot of areas as backup if he needs to go to him. But he said the biggest key back in 2021 and this tournament, managing your fish. In particular, managing your largemouth areas. Certainly had the largemouth dialed in, added those key smallmouth. It was just a masterful job there. He went to tack on another win last year at the Mississippi River. So two victories. Three he, years from Brian Schmidt. He said it's been a, a little bit different this year. Normally he has to have some Hail Marys at the end of the year to make the classic to stay requalified for the Elite Series, and those wins have came. But this year the pressure is different. He's he's in contention for Angler of the yeah. Year. If he has a really stellar week this week, he'll be right there in, in range of it. A big one. There's a pile of them right here too. It's not even that big. Nice one, but not big enough. You are alive. Ask or tell me about you uh, defending your title. Here. Well, you know we uh we had a pretty good practice, and um we're just gonna kind of sample. A bunch of stuff this morning. I really, 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 really would like to catch these small now. Good God, oh my. Just stand by for a second. So. We're excited, you know, it's the first day, it's gonna blow today. It's imperative to do the right thing today. Oh yeah. I think he ate my minter. Nope. <coughs> Starting to see what I want to see here. So anyway, we're, we're excited. <laughs> Still small, but there's a bunch. He'll at least be a place filler for a little bit if I can get him in the boat. Two pounder. 
early reports from the water Ooh, guys that like, the Brandon Cobb and Kyle Welcher <laughs> are actually within eyesight of each other on their starting spot for day and one. And take my drop shot all up. Not big, but he'll take the place of one for a little bit. Fat though. Fatty, fatty. Oh, we got no water. I heard they live better when you put them in water. Colin's gonna get aggravating probably, so I need to weigh them, unfortunately. Please, please Brandon stop Cobb doing that. Got it back on track with a 31st place at St. Clair last week. There we go. Scales were disagreeing with me for a minute there. It's crazy that the last They're just two so heavy. are the first two non-top yeah, That's almost a three-pounder. It's not. Seeing all of our anglers starting offshore today that we have on camera. Most of them concentrating really 20 Look to 35 screen. feet of water. But we're going to see some guys get way out in the abyss, Not 50 to 100 feet mean. of water chasing suspenders if the wind will let them today. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Quit playing. A nice one. Not quite the size, but we're getting somewhere. Starting to see a few. I thought I saw them there. That's what. All right, where'd y'all go? Oh boy. Okay, 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 okay. It's another nice one, but not what we need. I mean, these are three somethings, you know? There's a mess of them they want to bite. Of course, in practice, they're four pounders, you know? Right, we're gonna be okay. If these want to bite, we'll keep catching them. Got a, new, got a new leader with Joya Fujita. Landed his limit fish. He's got 17 and a pounds and four ounces. He's got one four pounder in there. Everything else over three. That was keeper number three for Brian Schmidt there. Yeah, and if you've been to Lake Champlain, one thing that we're seeing this morning, a lot of anglers concentrating on the inland sea. Years past, pretty much, really for the last 20 to 30 years. Inland Sea, this time of year especially, a lot of those fish get offshore. They just, Tommy, they weigh differently out of the Inland Sea compared to on the New York side. You see a lot of guys go up to Rouse's Point where you get a little bit more of a numbers game. But this time of year, it seems the best offshore Man, bite we've seen fast. Brandon Polinick do it in years past. The Inland Sea fish just way heavier this time of year. Well, now there, are they, are they, is he looking at rocks and features? Or are they just out there roaming around chasing bait? It, he's in a very, very popular area of the Inland Sea right now. Brian Schmidt is. Um, the more, there, there's just, a, there's a lot more contour where he's at. Uh, a lot uh -oh. of reefs that come up, very vertical bottom. Uh, 
Oh, feels like a big one. It's a nice, you know, these are nice fish. I really don't know how big they are, but we got a school that wants to bite. Oh, watch that guy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Keep Speed on hanging with us here for a minute. There is a mess of them here, dude. Three, that, I mean, I think they're all three. God. Beautiful drone shot right there from cameraman Wes Miller. I'll keep them, but I don't want to. Five. Golly, dude. Oh, this is fun, bro. We've seen this before. Brian Schmidt will flat take over Bassmaster <laughs> he, he Live Show. If you, if you, he's, he is fun to watch and listen to. And uh, earlier today, as a matter of fact, uh, he also contributing to Bassmaster Live today, he gave us his Bass Pro Shops top lures. Where my mamas go? We'll get that to you. Hey guys, Brian Schmidt, we're here at uh, Lake Champlain for stop number eight for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Tournament starts in the morning. It's a very simple pattern for me. I'm gonna target both species. I'm gonna throw a, a wacky worm, the Missile Baits Mini Magic Worm. This is gonna be a big player for me. Wacky style on a drop shot for smallmouth. Largemouth will eat this too, but I'll go for a little bit bigger profile. I'll go up to the regular magic worm from Missile, missile Baits. For the largemouth, I'll wacky style this or drop shot this as well for largemouth. And then for docks this week, I'm gonna be skipping the new Missile Baits Bomba. You could skip this a mile. And it's a perfect uh, crawfish imitator. Skip it way under these docks and catch a lot of largemouth doing this. This also can be Texas rig with no weight out on the shoals for smallmouth. I'll probably waste some men doing that as well. It's going to be a simple approach. Can't wait to get it going. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, 
Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Bassmaster live coverage from Lake Champlain. What a beautiful place. You got the Adirondacks to the west of New York, the Green Mountains. Very many views to the east around Vermont. And what tremendous fishing we have in between the two with this massive lake. Take a look at our leaderboard right now, unofficially. Kyoya Fujita, the rookie, at 17 pounds and four ounces. Got a four pound bass in that mix as well. That's going to be the Phoenix Boats big bass leader so far as well. Jacob Fount, second year man, in second place. Carl Jockinson moving up in there, and Brian Schmidt. We just saw Brian Schmidt put a quick limit in the boat. Hard for Fujita to take the rookie of the year lead when Joey Sefuentes is in the top 10 as well. That <laughs> seems like the, the case, especially at Champlain. They both are just equally uh, putting it out. Brian Schmidt, your champion from 2021 here. Yeah, and he made the comment, boy, it's if he could right leave there. his largemouth alone, he would be in real good shape here on day number one. So far, that is definitely happening for Brian Schmidt. And the interesting thing also, fishing in the Inland Sea, Brian Schmidt a little off to himself. We see a lot of anglers fishing close to each other this morning. Not the case for Brian Schmidt. My baby girls. Freaking one eight my sinker. Ah, sorry, buddy. Working on. Not the time to have a tangle. Where are my big ones? You can't answer that, but still. <laughs> it was rhetorical. True. They're here. Tommy, he said he's been coming to Champlain since he's been a amateur pro angler for years and years. The last time he's seen it, the water at this level, or at least this high, was 2011, so it's been over 12 wow. years. So I know really none of our Elite Series pros have really probably seen it at this level either. Hank Cherry. One of four Hank Cherry fishing on the way. New York side, Tommy. And one thing, Hank Cherry, like Kyle Welcher, a lot of our anglers said, they have seen schools throughout practice on their forward-facing sonar that were enormous. I'm talking like 100 fish schools this time of year where smallmouth getting offshore, chasing bait. Hank Jerry, like Brian Schmidt, a great practice. Gosh, it wasn't coming off. Just off to his side, apparently. It's Taku Ito. He's in jeopardy of missing the classic. He's Dude, deep he in the so AYC at and he's 66th. He would need a you know three top tens in a row like he, he did so in 20. Uh, I can't 20. I can't compete with that. I'm just telling you I can't. The story of story. I don't know. The right fisheries for him to do well. And that was my fear. Is that too many of them left the grass? Mm hmm. Let's take, let's take you from Hank Cherry over to Seth Fighter. Seth Fighter with a great, great record here. Fourth. 
2021, two second places before that on Elite Series event? Yeah, Seth really worried about this tournament, said his practice was random. Always mixes in some good large mouth and said, man, it has not happened throughout practice. Very worried yesterday afternoon. Stay on. I ain't that big. Not that big. Me, no. Not big. You turn the light bulb on. Oh, shit. Okay. What's the size limit here? 12? Do we know? I don't know. It is 12. Seth said it may not be his game plan, but that someone will crush a good bag of largemouth today on a frog if he had to guess. He said someone in the field is going to, I don't know if it's Ticonderoga, I don't know if it's Mississippi, I don't know if it's another bay, but someone's going to hit him on a, lar on a frog today. Well, that, you know, as much as Tommy likes to fuel the fun with forward-facing <laughs> sonar sure. all week mm -hmm. long, a, a frog mixed in would not that be That would be great. No, it's a little palate cleanser for you. Kyle Welcher, one point back to start this week. Progressive Bassmaster angle to your points. He's one spot ahead of, ahead of Cobb right now, 12 to 13, so they're tied oh, yeah, for real wide right now. Uh. Kyle Welcher said he's going to mix in some of that really deep water suspended bait ball action today getting out in 80 to 100 feet of water and tommy one of the things that he, he was like hank jerry said he has laid eyes with his forward facing sonar on mega mega yeah. schools he mm, said the fat. problem is once you get one to bite they are so hard to relocate i'll wait him in a second No, he ain't that big. He's short, he's real short. He's way shorter than that first one. He's fat though, yeah. I'll weigh him in just a second. I, I don't think he's quite. He comes hooked up. And there's a fish. Oh, hey, that's cool when they just come off the hook like that and you ain't gotta get a jerk bait in your hand. Feels good to catch. Not a very big one, but he's, he is a start. Two and a half, maybe. Maybe soaking wet two and a half. He's catching a pike, though. Yeah, man. Caught a four pounder right there in practice, same waypoint. Combs second to Schmidt in 2021. I would love if he caught him the same way with that walking top water visual, shallower small mouth. We are not gonna see that, Ronnie. <laughs> Talking to Combs yesterday, pretty much cranking, jerk baiting. That has been his game. He tried to keep that top water on us, but really the conditions we're gonna have today and especially tomorrow. Tomorrow it is gonna be ripping in the morning. And the biggest problem on Champlain, if you've been there, is the lake running north and south, we talked about it at the top of our broadcast, is they all... if you get some west or you get some east, it'll 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 be okay. But boy, when it comes either straight out of the north or the straight direction of the south that we're seeing today, it will get rocking. And we're gonna definitely see that by this afternoon. I got a big spinner offshore on the east coast that's just uh, clockwise and it right up the lake there. And 
boy, I was I was actually in upstate New York three weeks ago. It was historical rains for three days up around the New York huh? Vermont border. And no joke, Tommy, I was in Syracuse and it, every single news for broadcast that we were watching was footage of this region of how high the lakes got really within 48 hours. Yeah. And coming off an already wet July, right? I mean, it's, yes. yeah, it's been, yes. it's, as you say, historical. What's the difference, Z? You've been to Champlain for tournaments in the past, you know, earlier in your career and whatnot. This is the first time we've ever been here in mid-August. Every event we've ever been has been mid-July <laughs> and at the latest ending like August 1st or 2nd. So this is, this is two weeks at least later than ever before. It, it, here's what's really, that's a great, Question, Ronnie. What, this time of year, I fished an open here back. Oh gosh, I don't Stop. know. Ninety-seven years, but it was like <laughs> two thousand four. It was my first year of television, and I, what you see is the the smallmouth just group up so good in mid to late August compared to late July, the beginning of August, and they really do it in a in a two week stretch, uh, and they're starting to put on really That's good, good weight this time of year. But what you see, Ronnie, to you just see bigger schools of smallmouth mid August to late August. And it's something that's really funny, looking at one right there with Keith Combs on the New York side. Decent, decent. That open I fished, I, I I don't know, I took oh second or gosh, third place dude, in it. Chill out. In the inland sea, and Koya Fujita is right up, there, right uh, now. It's that's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know how much history ha he has here, but uh the Dude. the other thing I thought it was a four when it you, jumped well, it's you really don't know about champlain is these are the conditions those smallies bite where you get some wind um a lot of our angle all of our anglers had really good practice conditions cool. calm water cool. but there is a crazy crazy amount of current Way in this there. lake It's, uh, that's what you're looking for. Those kind, throwing a couple fours. You're where you need to be on this lake. I noticed that the fish in this area are really fat. Like if you caught a sure enough big one, it could have an extra 10 or 12 ounces on it. Like, you know. Just because they're so thick. I like catching on a drop shot better. I'm not very good. I call this the jiggle minnow. I don't know what Patrick calls it, but it's the jiggle minnow. It's not very like good at the jiggle there. minnow. Like they spent all night at the buffet, man. I just like. <laughs> oh, I loosened my drag on that last one. Well, I was fighting it. <laughs> This is why I just couldn't go large mouthing. Now <laughs> loosen my drag on that last one. It's about free spool when I set the hook. <laughs> Medium. Not quite as big as that last one, but. Ronnie, I'll tell you, though, it is really bizarre. And we we all know and all of all of our viewers on Bassmaster Live know this board facing sonar has changed so much of how our anglers fish now in tournaments, outside of tournaments. Grab. But to see a New York lake that is three feet high and yeah. not to see a large mouth this morning is so strange. It's gonna be close. I think he's gonna be like a 370. There, my scales are not gonna work, and we're not gonna know. There 
I nailed it. 370. <laughs> the one thing a lot of these anglers from practice notice is the water clarity in a lot of areas with pollen. Hey, we got a skeeter boat, big fish in Go ahead. More. Maddie Wong, a four pound, eight ounce. Wow. He, along with Justin Atkins and Carl Jockison, have climbed into our top 10. Oh. <laughs> Four in there, correct? Sorry, Tommy, but a lot of the anglers were talking sure. about there was in the inland sea, especially there wasn't a bunch of wind like Z was saying. Yeah, I pollen, uh, I guess maybe other fertilizers and things when the water's been high that sure, pulls that it all pull in. it back in when yep. the water recedes a little bit has made uh, some of these areas greener water. Some of these bays that normally have grass and good water colors have been browner. So we'll see how yeah. with this wind today what the water changes like as well as when it mixes. To keep our eye Tommy, on the day. Browner, a word? Is that browner? a word? Browner? Browner? <laughs> browner. Brownish? Dirtier. -er. Oh. Most is brown. As you say, we're looking for some green fish to show up a little later, and it will happen. We'll see someone catch a largemouth before too long. But right now, Kyoya Fujita, the rookie on top with 17 pounds and 7 ounces. Brian Schmidt, last angler to win here with the elites, is in second place. Fouts, Jockinson, and Justin Atkins rounding out our top five. We'll be right back to Lake Champlain. Yeah! Order! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. 102 anglers full field out there today and tomorrow at the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. We are missing Bernie Schultz this week, who's usually a pretty feisty competitor up in this part of the world. Had a, he's taken sideline by injury. He will not be here for the rest oh, of the yeah. season. Says he'll be back, and no one doubts that. He'll think he was. He'll be back and good to go. Lifting a 300-inch TV or something and tore his <laughs> bicep, or I don't know how that's. <laughs> that's big maybe it's an old school I, TV, maybe. That's, that's something I oh, don't yeah. need to do for sure. Let's take a look at our anglers, how they're, the ones we're following today, and how they are laid out on this massive 500 square mile. Yep, a lot of our anglers fishing up north on the New York side, up towards Rouse's Point, but really, Rouse's Point, a big player in years past, decades past here mm -hmm. on Lake Champlain. Not a very big player today, really. A lot of the action in the inland sea. A lot of anglers fishing 25 to 35 feet of water. An interesting Tommy looking at all of our anglers on our GPS today, not one angler south of Mallet's Bay. Wow. Be a huge commitment to go down to Ticonderoga today and one that you could not recover from if it doesn't work out. Yeah, and w w one thing that's always been kind of strange about Lake Champlain, you see it on Cayuga is, as long as this lake is, 125 miles, it has historically always been the north end of the lake and the south yeah. end of the lake and really there's like 60 miles where you never see a competitor from really from burlington all the way down to crown point um it's just the environment the environment on the north end of this lake for smallmouth and the vegetation from crown point down to ticonderoga has always been the historically good largemouth fishing, except for Missisquoi Bay. That's always been a big player, but it's always been the north end and the south end since mm. the beginning of time, That's the beginning right. of tournaments. Got our two progressive angler of the year leaders. I think you said in a virtual tie now, Such, Brandon Cobb and Kyle I, Welcher. I think Cobb has uh, risen up in our top 10 and that uh, big Welcher has fallen the, down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wel Welcher's down to 23rd right now. He's stuck on two fish. So, Tommy Sutrana, you're gonna. I, I, I did on location at Lake St. Clair. Sequoia Fujita unofficially in first place. And, and as we've talked about this year, Koya doesn't really like to give that much information. He's, he obviously has a some very powerful baits that he catches smallmouth with. That not sure we quite get all the information and so he weighed in on day number three and i was standing with taku and I, I could not hold back and i just walked up to him 
I said, Koi, I need to know every single one of your baits that you're throwing. <laughs> Tommy, it did not go well. <laughs> it did not. It did not go well. <laughs> Koya, Koya has a, a, a translator, oh, and I can man. see both of them. Both of them were yeah. not happy with me, and I don't. I, I don't feel like we're going to get any information today whatsoever that we're looking for. That's at least factual. I've, I've seen that play out with you and certain anglers in the past. It's uh, you know, yeah, yep, a, a, yep, a, a yep, similar yep. profile. Yeah. Even yeah. ones without yep. language barriers. Yeah. Yes, I enjoy doing that for. Better side of 15 years to Edwin Evers. And like Koya, it did not go well. It didn't end well either. Uh. And Tommy, the, my, the problem is, and I think you know this, once I know that there is a barrier, I, I tend to throw in. gas on it. Yes, you, you you pick it at the at the. Uh, <laughs> but, oh my God! At the vulnerabilities there. I've seen that. A lot of life through here. Fighter, year, fighter 2001 the, angler of the year sorry unusually unusually slow day on lake champlain for seth fighter and like we said he was very very worried a lot of anglers having a big practice brian schmidt one of those anglers hank cherry really solid practice and seth fighter said no he was like brandon cobb brandon cobb was very worried about today and i asked brandon cobb i said have you thought about Angler of the Year a lot, really, the last couple weeks since Lake St. Clair? And he said, you really think about Angler of the Year a lot more when you're having a sucky practice. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Never thought about that. All of our top five in Angler of the Year are from the Southeast. And you'd think that, you know, the complexion of that would change as you get, but not anymore. I mean, they're all with the technology we talk about, with the universal information. They're just all citizens of bass fishing now. It, it, you, yeah. I agree with that. It, you know what's strange is what you've seen with forward facing sonar. And I don't want this to sound the wrong way, but I got to get an up close look at it especially on Lake St. Clair. It has made a lot of guys that used to really struggle catching smallmouth really good mm. at catching smallmouth. <laughs> Schmidt fifth last outing at St. Clair. Finishing strong as he did last year. Finished strongest of anyone last year with the victory at the end of the season. Um, I mean, history, I, I definitely got a couple little things that are usually good for a fish or two, but um, practice was rough on me. Uh, Did not have a great practice. Ain't got much to go on. I got a couple little smallmouth areas, and uh, the few like mediocre, my largemouth fishing stuff wasn't really good. And that's kind of a lot of the success I've had here has been because I've been able to catch some big largemouths every year, and that just is not happening for me right now. You have the last eight so, days of tournament fishing. Small mouth Champlain. He's keep getting three bigger every year we bass. come here. Wow. And the largemouth fishing seems hmm. to get tougher. Not sure why, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna try to stick with the smallies as long as I can. See what see what we can make of it. Yeah. 
Just like at this point, there's more four pound smallies than four pound large mouse in the lake, which didn't used to be the case. seen some great fish catching already today. Let's bring in our associate, the one and only, the legend, Davey Height, Hall of Famer. Oh, we're gonna hold on, let Brian Schmidt land this one. All right, we'll let that one go. So now we go to the former classic champ, two-time angler of the year, Davey Hyde. Davey Hyde, you've got so much history here. Uh, this place has always been a, a, a gold star spot, a place you guys point to. How is it a little different this time around? Well, the obvious thing, you're exactly right, Tommy. It is different, and the obvious thing is the water level is higher than it's been in a very long time. I guess I started coming up here in the mid 90s or so and and I think the water level was about the same back then but it seems like the last 10 or 12 years it's just been a little lower each year and, and it's definitely changed the fishing the one thing that I think has surprised a lot of the anglers and me included uh, the largemouth fishing you think okay high water there's going to be so much cover even the willow trees in the water the largemouth fishing would be great but I have not talked to anyone that said they're going to target just largemouth here this week Davey, one of the things that we've talked about a lot of the attention in this tournament right now is in the in the inland sea. And historically, this time of year, the inland sea is the biggest player. But one of the other players that we always see is that flat, really from 12 to 17 foot of water up by Rouse's Point on the New York side. That's always been a player. There are only like two or three boats. Is there? Did you get any word about that section of Lake Champlain before the tournament started? Yeah, see, it's, it's really funny there again with the high water things that have that are going on here. You think would would be just the opposite, and, and, and you're right. The the area on the New York side, we've stayed over on the New York side this morning. Probably go over to the inland sea a little later today or tomorrow, but. But I guess it's just that flat that's always so good, and those fish seem to be in that depth, you know, 17 up to about even 12 feet of water. Everyone I've talked about, talked to, and, and that I've seen this morning seems to really be out there in the 20 to 30, even 40 feet of water. And, and the high water seems to have just scattered the bait, and those the bait seems to be deeper. And, and you think, okay, well, maybe it's a thermocline, the factor, those fish, you know, there's a certain area where the bait's at, but it doesn't seem to be that way because they're not all at like at 20 to 25. There's some guys fishing over 50 feet of water, catching them at 20, and some on down to 30 or 35 feet deep. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this week unfolds. We've been here a lot of times, but it's a very different Champlain right now. Davey, in years past, decades past, every single angler would always have to calculate Ticonderoga as at least one day of their practice. It's like you had to check it out. And there has been big stringers talking to a lot of the local anglers, guys like Tom Victor. Uh, it's been a player this year. Did you talk to anybody that kept Ticonderoga honest throughout practice at all? So I talked to just a couple anglers and, and literally it was like yesterday because the, the smallmouth fishing seemed to be so random. Uh, you know, you see Brian Smith catching them kind of at will, but but m most of the field is kind of like, man, I can catch some good smallmouth, but you just have to search for them with forward-facing sonar, and you catch one, and they disappear. But a couple anglers yesterday, like, I got to go keep Ticonderoga honest, and they said they caught fish, you know, but a lot of three, three-and-a-half-pounders, and now, you know, I, the smallmouth seem to be getting bigger everywhere we go, and I think Part of that is the fact that they are getting bigger, but the other part is a fact that the forward-facing sonar helps. So they go down there and catch three and a half, four-pound largemouth and think, man, that just won't cut it. It's not worth the run. Davey, wow. good stuff as always. Thank you so much. Uh, Davey Hyatt out there keeping track of the issues, wondering, like all the rest of us, is going to be 20 smallmouth is going to be the, the winning effort. Who knows? Tommy, are we going to see a bass actually not caught or caught, not caught using forward-facing sonar today at all? <laughs> yeah, at all? We're waiting. We're waiting. Kyoya Fujita on top still with 17 pounds and 7 ounces. And Absolutely. Brian Schmidt, as expected, right there with him. Jacob Fountain needs to uh, brighten things up on his consistency outlook during the course of these last two weeks. Jockinson, Atkinson, all the rest.
We'll step away from Lake Champlain for just a minute and be right back. Yeah! A glitter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Live coverage continues. We got six more hours of it coming your way here from legendary Lake Champlain. The Dakota, Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite here. Going out of our fantastic host city, Plattsburgh, New York, day one. Full field, 102 anglers out there today. We're with six of them all day long, including uh, this man with three Bassmaster victories. One of them uh, last year in an open, as a matter of fact, a must win for him because it got him into the, into the classic. Yeah. Texas, Keith Combs. We got now new leader, Tommy Alex Redwine, 20 pounds, 12 ounces. Got three fish over four pounds, and our Phoenix boats big bass of 413. Right. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to do it much. That, and that's my only bite to do in this. Oh, Ronnie, you want to see it so bad, don't you, buddy? I do. I uh, know you do. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Well, heck, boy, it's scrawny. Mm. Scrawny, scrawny little dude. That's not a, that's not one chasing the, uh, Smelt, I guess. Chasing crawfish or something in here. Gosh dang, that, that's right where I, <laughs> I was. I'm surprised. Pleasantly surprised. I'm not mad at him. Boy, I seen how big his mouth was. I was like, that's a tank. Uh, just kind of old, gnarly, gnarly trout. Your Keith Combs I mean, I talk got about right on that spot. Like I said, there was three of them that hit it there in practice. It was calm, and I could see that they were clearly all different fish. The last one was a big one. I don't know what it is. Maybe a big rock or something. There, it's all grassed in, so you can't really tell. Your combs talk about smelt chasers. Man, Perch I that always was a big big. forage. Always a big forage on Champlain being perch, but the Davy kind of talking about it, how big the smallmouth have gotten here. There's always been big smallmouth in here, but there's no doubt that the uh the presence of Gobi has exploded a lot of the size and it's it's all relative i mean obviously at st Clair two weeks ago you needed five pounders to chase a win five pounders still on lake champlain that is that is gold man it's a, it is always been you are after that four pound average on this lake Took a four pound average to be in the top 10 here back in 2001 after day number one. See how that works out. We'll start speculating about that 20 pound bags, etc. today. A little bit later, let's get over to Hank Cherry, won the classic at Gunnersville back in 2020, and backed it up. Lake Ray Roberts in Texas a year later, actually 18 months later. Didn't know this, Tommy. Hank Cherry actually having a back procedure a couple weeks ago. Was kind of worried about the, obviously, not the lake God, to be see on see after having a back procedure. Damn, yeah, you can get bounced around so out Shad's here. I think. Yeah, Ronnie yeah, told me about bed. that. I didn't I didn't know about that either. Ronnie told me about that yesterday. I didn't tell you. Sources told me. Sources, I'm sorry. Sources. Experts told me that. 
But that was with those forecasts he spent that final day of practice making sure he had something that was either protected or something fishable just mm. in case it did get gnarly this afternoon. Hasn't gotten the most bites this morning, but the two that he's gotten, you know, that yeah. we've seen on live, a three and a quarter and a three and three quarter. That's not Stocky too bad fish. of a size for sure. And he he's usually plays it close to the best. He said he had a huge, huge practice here. He didn't act very big at first, did he? He just started coming up there. I'm mad because these are big ones. Nice. And I lost three big ones right there. Four even. Just lost two like this, but it's okay. Get rid of, get rid of old yellow. Hey, Bubba. Give us some, yes. Go, baby. They're here. <laughs> the always watchable Brian Schmidt out there getting it done yet again here in 2023. Exactly right, Tommy. Your VMC on point going to be Brian Schmidt making the comment if he can leave his large mouth alone until the weekend. Solely chase smallmouth today and possibly tomorrow. Obviously, fish management has been big really for Brian hard. Schmidt here in years past. Getting it done, about 30 feet of water, call it. Forward facing sonar beat down early today. Jig head minnow mixed in with a drop shot. Getting pretty much all of his work done before the heavy winds arrive. Supposed to get 15 to 25 miles an hour out of the south later today. Good morning for Brian Schmidt. A lot of just quality smallmouth in his live well. You look at the background of a lot of uh, the images behind Brian Schmidt. You fish Lake Champlain, you know exactly where he's at. In fact, we've had a camera there in years past with Brian Schmidt, BMC on point, defending his title here from 2021. Big morning, Brian Schmidt, a known Chicago Bears fan too. Oh, really? <laughs> How about that? Yes. Unknown. Did not know that. You heard from his comments, those early <coughs> fish, that four pounds is going to be like, that's, yes. the, that's the qualifier for these small amounts. Not Anything less, it's just not going to get it done. Please be what I think you are. I think it's a good one, dude, but I think he swallowed it. A good one, but I don't know if we could keep him, dude. I think he swallowed it. Not as good as I thought. We're gonna let him go. 
he got it down his throat. Thought he was a big, big. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. Big cherry hooked up again. Hanging in there in the top 30. Just two right now. Could not, could not draw up better smallmouth conditions on Lake Champlain that we're seeing today. Oh, no. oh. He's almost in here. Fusion drop shot hook. Two more, we're going lark now fishing. Wouldn't mind wow. seeing that. Yeah. That's, that sounds fun. <laughs> Jacob Fouts, who uh, second year man, needs to yeah needs to brighten had, things up a little bit here. Had a great week last week at our last event at Lake St. Clair. That top seventy requalification line is important. That's a that's a guarantee. You can requalify for the Elite Series being below that number, but being above seven seventy and above is a guarantee. And for some of these younger anglers that have one, two, three years of experience, they don't have much track record to help their cause like a 10-year yeah. veteran would where he's got the high years and the low years and their average is out. It's a lot more brutal on your average when you only have two years of, of reflection on it. So top 70 is huge for a lot of anglers these last two events to stay requalified. Yeah, before St. Clair, here's 97th in AOI right now is fourth place. Would give him up to 66th. That would be, yeah, back-to-back -to -back top 10s would be huge be huge for him if you don't you don't need to film you know don't <laughs> what's going on there Tommy uh, that's what we want to know what's going <laughs> good start good start good start it's like start waving your arms but, saying words yeah. just so people don't see what you're tired of room to go. a lot going on over there exactly All right, we're pushing on into our third hour of fishing here on Lake Champlain. We've got Alex Redwine of Ohio, second year. Elite Series angler, breaking through the 20 pound mark, and well past 20 pounds, almost closing in on 21 unofficially. Gary Fujita, the rookie, hanging in there in second place, almost 19 pounds. Brian Schmidt, the last one to win here, Fouts. Looking good today as well. We got a lot of stuff working here on Champlain today. Happy to be in New York. Yeah! Another! No way! 
you're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Yes, Plattsburgh, the state of New York. We love New York. We always say that. So many great places to fish up here, you know, St. Lawrence, Ontario, Champlain, uh, Cayuga, Cayuga, uh, even, even places we haven't been to, like Lake George and Chautauqua, you know, are just fantastic. It's a great, great bass fishing state. There's no doubt about that. We're seeing some great bass fishing out there today as we get out. Uh, right now, we've got, uh, we've got uh, Alex Redwine of Ohio on top of our leaderboard, just joining the top 10. Jeff Gustafson, our reigning classic champ, a lot of anglers pulling for him to get some more points and double qualify uh, for the classic, so it opens up another spot. <laughs> we got one. fishing for a lot of suspended fish even though some of the areas he's found them tommy out in 70 to 100 feet of water a lot of these smallmouth suspended on these bait pods only about 15 to 20 feet down and he also made the comment when you found a pack of them not a single but when you found a pack of them three four at times he said 50 they would get really competitive for the bait and he said they were extremely not intelligent <laughs> when there was multiples. Kyle Welcher's made every cut this year, having a great, great season. His worst event was last time out at St. Clair, it's 44th place. Yeah, him and Blaylock. Blaylock is like 12th or 13th in Angler of the Year and hasn't missed a cut either, but he hasn't had a top 20. He's been 20th to 50th every event, but hasn't he, hasn't had a, a top tier event to really get him in the top 10 in points. The weird thing, he's hardly appeared on Bassmaster Live this year. That's kind of an Just odd so set of rock solid. You got eight days of fishing left. You're live. How are you feeling about these last two tournaments? I mean, I have fun fishing up here. I never have a ton of confidence doing it, but I like doing it. I mean, it's one of those things where I can't really think about the eight days of fishing left. Just got to get a check or make the top ten or whatever you're trying, whatever you can do. Catch everything you can. That's about about all you can do to it. Have fun doing it. The fishing up here is good, so just have fun catching fish. If it happens, it happens. If not. We're going to catch a bunch of fish and hope, hope uh, it's enough. Although Brandon Cobb loves playing video games, Tommy, he is not a video game lover when it comes to bass fishing. He's not one of those electronics gurus. We talk about the younger generation that's tech savvy and likes why, those why things. Why is that? I think he's just old soul at heart, honestly, the way he okay. fishes in the Carolinas and, and grew up fishing. Like, that's just, he is a buzz bait, jig, down the bank, shaky head guy compared to, you know, a lot of the newer anglers that There's look for of schools of fish. He's always been like a, a single wolf pack type of, type of fisherman up shallow and stuff. Welcher did pretty well when he fished here shallow in 2020. He was 22nd place in the next time. He was in the 50s, and Cobb's the opposite. He started uh, 2020, he was 54th, I think, and then 32nd last time here, 2021. I don't know if they're shy of the boat or whatnot, but it's kind of annoying. It seems like everyone you see, for the most part, is like 80, 100 foot from the boat. You can never see them close. Slow day for Seth Fighter so far. Yeah. You Been said he had a bad year. practice? Yes, yes, yes. Not a not a lot of confidence coming into in day one. <laughs> Now, 
That's odd with his great finishes here. Yeah. Never lower than fourth. Koya Fujita just caught a three pound, 12 ounce, it called up to 19 and a half pounds. I'm just trying to catch as much weight as I can every single day, you know? Not really a lot you can do to, you know, help yourself win AOI except catch them, you know? So we're just focusing on that, not really changing anything because of the position. I mean, every single tournament we try to do the best we can and that's what guys here, that's what we're gonna keep doing. Kyle's best finish was a seventh place at Sabine. Worst finish for Brandon Cobb. M multiple yeah. top tens there at the Sabine for Welcher. And that's the, that's the thing about it. We, we see a two horse race. These guys have been so steady all year long. One point separating them. Basically every event, they've both been in the top 20 or 30, it seems. But the fact of the matter is they could finish 50th this week. They could make the day three cut and finish 50th. And somebody like Tyler Rivette, John Cox, Drew Cook, Joey Sefuentes, they get a top 15, All right, let's roll. top 20. Yeah, it's it's, it's tied a tie up. ball they game that with lead. multiple people going into the final event. So it's not just do your job and make the cut and no one else can catch you. It is you better, you better at least move up on day three if you have the chance because it's not out of the realm of, of catching up for any of these guys in the top 10. Yeah, far from over. Brian Schmidt in the top five right now. That's what he needs to do. About 61 points back. Gets a top 10 here. He may be within 25 at St. Lawrence and that's doable. For we got a lot of guys off bass track, but Schmidt is now with his third place in fourth in AOI. Yeah. So he's already moved up today. Yeah. Speaking of moving up, Matt Robertson is tied with Brock Mosley in fifth place, 16 and a half pounds each. It's going to be interesting to watch as we get into this event in day two or day high, three. So a lot of your leaders right now fishing within sight of each other them. and how the schools will or not hold up throughout uh, this event. Because there's a lot of guys fishing very close to each other right now. Brian New just popped into our top 10. He is still trying to make his climb. He was 101st, three events ago. Now he's 60th in AOI, and if he finishes uh, in the top 10, he'll, he'll cut that and have a chance to get in the Classic. Wow. He's had a baby. His wife did. 18. is his unofficial poundage right now. <coughs> Feels like a big. Dude, there's so many with this guy. Well, and what really really makes Brian Schmidt dangerous is not having to touch those small mouth or the large mouth today. Mm. He said he has 10 areas with real, real quality large mouth that if, if he cannot look at them till this weekend, he is, he is going to be a problem. Two and a half, four. 
by far his smallest one. one. He weighed the other three, knowing that they would be pretty close in the three, three and a half range. That one being under that mark gets a cold tag. That'll be the first one to go for Hank Cherry as we bring it in to the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge real quick. Wanted to touch base early in, these, in this event based on who our favorites were coming in. Most of the time we have a favorite or two on camera. There's a couple other favorites that we keep an eye on as well. And when it comes to Mercury Drain the Lake and Rappel of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing, each bucket basically had someone that you could consider a favorite in the event based on past performances, whether it's on the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Bass Master Opens or other tournament trails. Brian Schmidt, he wasn't the highest picked angler in bucket A. I don't know how. It's one of the most uh, confusing things. He was second or third highest with 25%. I think Brandon Polinick was in that yes. bucket. He has a great track record here too, but Brian Schmidt being underrated this week percentage-wise, he should be in that 45, 50% range just his track record alone. I think he's got four or five top tens in other leagues. He's got two wins in his three times here with Bassmaster. Uh, he's fished two elites in an open, obviously. Then we have Seth Fighter, his three elite series events he's fished, the three-day event in 2017, and then 2020 and 2021. All three of those have been top fives. But like you said this morning, a lot of it was largemouth dependent. We've seen him catch a six-pounder, five-and-a-half-pounders. Like Such said, of his eight days previously, he uh, his most recent eight days, he has had the big bass of the day three of those eight times. That's why we kept an eye on him. If the largemouth don't pan out, can he get it done on just smallmouth? Austin Felix, he kind of worked with Brian Schmidt last year, helping him give him a little tidbit and info about smallmouth. Those last two smallmouth helped Brian Schmidt win in 2021 at the end of the day. Felix is one to keep an eye on. He had some adversity at Lake St. Clair, got ran into by a Chicago bus, uh, totaled his boat, had to get a replacement just to fish Sam Champlain, I mean uh, St. Clair, barely missed the cut there. He's going to hope to have a good New York swing. Champlain's been great to him. Taku Ito, when we talked about those three top tens that he had that one year, I think it was 2020 on the Bassmaster Elite Series, uh, he was fantastic at St. Clair, Champlain, St. Lawrence. He's already done that on leg one of our Northern Swing. We should keep an eye out for him. He was near Hank Cherry this morning catching yeah. some fish. And then a guy who needs to catch him to stay requalified for the Bassmaster Elite Series, but it seems like every time at the end of the season, he comes through when the pressure's the highest. Josh Douglas, he's done it through the Opens multiple years. Uh, he is, obviously needs a good Northern Swing. He has a good smallmouth angler and he has one to watch in bucket E for fantasy fishing if you picked him for your team or considered him. So guys, there's some favorites that, you know, that that were highly rated and some that were severely underrated in my opinion uh, going into this event. How about Fujita? Was he picked? Uh, he was picked a decent 10%, amount. 10%, 9, 9, 10, 9, 12 percent. Yeah. yeah, for sure. The one, the one wild card Tommy. that I get, he's got the technology and the skill, but a lot of these places, it's the first time he's ever been yeah, there for the, right. so we don't know tangible experience wise. Tommy, what do you think of this idea? And I'm going to throw it to a lot of our viewers really want to know some of those lures we were talking about with Fujita. What do you think of, we have Zooch call him tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Such kind of has a magic zier. way. Yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's an interview master. He's, you know, he can. Oh, yeah. Well, you watch. I go through Sago. He's, he's <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, Z, Fujita's kind of like uh, those, those girls in high school, and I used to text them. It's just text on the right side. There's no text coming in from the left side. Like, he, he doesn't respond. And, and I've just got this huge chain this year of texting him different things and uh, just no response. You know so I mean? maybe I have the wrong number. Right. I don't know, but I don't, I don't think so. Such. Put you know, Such on so it. So Such has got a sweet talk. Yeah. yeah. He could trick him into no. nothing, I bet. <laughs> Texting wasn't a thing back when Tommy and I were in high school, so I really don't know the <laughs> connection. No, <laughs> no I, I had to figure out other ways to fail with female <laughs> communication. <laughs> Dang it. See, this is why you can't drag, because, oh, I'm about to miss three. I'm going to be gone by the time I get back.
Brandon Cobb got the job done last week at St. Clair and holding his own today, pretty much. Hook up plentiful times today. And really, coming into this tournament yesterday afternoon, Brandon Cobb saying it was by far exponentially the worst practice he has had all season long. Season was so much consistency. Coming in today, like Seth Fighter said, man, I am really worried about day one here on Lake Champlain, but some nice quality in the live well right now. Have him with four bass, I believe, unofficially, oh, just under 12 pounds. So well on his way to staying up there in the Angler of the Year. To points race right now. Yeah. Good morning for Brandon Cobb. Brandon Cobb came out here with a on the Elite Series with a with a bang, won two times not in his rookie fast. season. Got two good ones, decent ones, not big ones, but decent ones and two little ones. Caught a few more maybe keepers, but threw them back, so we got four in the live well. Seeing a few, but they're with the wind and blowing a little bit, and they're moving really, really fast. It's almost most of these fish are on bait out here, and imagine fish schooling when you're trying to throw at them with like a top water and you got to land right in them. Well, it's the same thing with this front looking sonar. They're essentially schooling on bait out here. And you got to land right on them to catch them. It's pretty challenging fishing. And Tommy, I'll say in 2019, Brandon Cobb said, he says now, four years wiser, he doesn't fish any different if he's trying to make up points or he just fishes his normal way. In 2019, when he won two elites, he fished to win the rest of the season and had absolutely a terrible northern swing. Almost missed the classic, was like the last man in after winning two elites that year. So stick to your Learned game plan. Yeah, he knows, he knows better. Getting it done here. Alex Redwine getting it done better than anyone else. First man to bust through 20 pounds. He's on up there. The rookie cure with Fujita. Brian Schmidt, we have watched him all morning long. Jacob Fouts, Brock, had a brief look at Jacob Fouts and Brock Mosley, our winner from the Sabine. Now climbing into the top five here, there's plenty more left to go on day one on Lake Champlain. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota and by Dakota Lithium. Just an absolute treat to bring you these last three events of our season here from up in our northern swing. All of us in the south will get a get a sort of a, a look at what actual, you know, comfortable temperatures feel like and stuff like that. It's a it's a good experience to watch, and uh, we're watching some good fishing out there today with Alex Redwine. Second year angler from Ohio, leading the way so far. The rookie Fujita behind him and Brian Schmidt, who Ronnie confessed he couldn't imagine why he wasn't the prohibitive favorite for everybody. Hanging in there in third. Oh, yeah. Taking There's a look Alex. at your marathon peak performance today. Solid morning. Ohio angler, Alex Redwine, with a, still a little bit of room to grow, has a couple. Heavy threes in there, getting it done in the Inland Sea. And as we said, Tommy Sanders kind of looking into day two right now, early here on day number one, Alex Redwine fishing a very popular area of the Inland Sea. Going to see, I think, a lot of your leaders with cameras there tomorrow. Officially with 20 pounds and 12 ounces, marathon peak performance, young Alex Redwine. He just called. Got a four six, he's up to 21 pounds, six ounces. Ooh. Wow, man. Ooh. Getting it done. Ooh. Ooh. That's nice. <laughs> Ooh. So are they gonna be are, are they gonna be piled into one corner of the lake like they were last time at St. Clair tomorrow? <laughs> no, not, no, not, no, not Tommy, like that. I have never what happened at Lake St. Clair, this is no joke. You know how we have our GPS tracking of all the anglers. I'm not kidding. When I went day one, when I went to do the the Dave and Davey show with Mercer. When I came around the corner on the north side of uh, Anchor Bay, I looked at my tracker of all of our anglers and it showed 70 of them in Anchor Bay. And I thought, I thought, doggone it, my, my, my tracker's broke. And then I turned the corner and looked, I looked out 
And there was uh, literally three quarters of the field fishing in Anchor Bay. Um, I don't think we're going to see them that close together tomorrow, but they are going to be some of your leaders are going to be pretty, pretty darn close mm -hmm. on day two, it appears. I, I'll tell you, looking at the map today of all of our anglers, I don't think we've ever had a tournament on Lake Champlain where zero, zero anglers made the, did not make the run to, to Ticonderoga. There is, there is nobody down in Ticonderoga right now. And, and, and I don't think we've ever say that I was gonna say and we, and we have about 40 anglers that don't have a marshal so if they don't plug in their own bass track they may not have a ping so right, right. May, maybe we'll get two or three out of that but yeah this is and it's not conducive you know that run Z especially in not calm seas yes and that's the biggest you know if you've never fished Lake Champlain if you're gonna make that run from Plattsburgh down to tie you're looking at a 70 mile run and you do not want uh, 15 to 25 straight out of the south going down to Ticonderoga, which we are going to have all of that after our midday break, it appears. Looking at the forecast of winds today, it's going to get ripping afternoon. Uh, and especially, it's going to be grimy tomorrow morning. We're going to have 15 to 30 mile per hour gusts. So tomorrow morning is going to be a it's going to be a sketchy day. Looking at our TH Marine yeah, weather watch today. Partly cloudy skies, that's all good, but that wind's going to creep around 20 to 25 later today into tonight. We're going to have 30 mile per hour gusts into our takeoff tomorrow. It's going to be a little bit sketchy tomorrow. Last time we were Beautiful here in 2021, yep. Z, we had one angler who had enough weight, sheer weight, to make the cut from Ticonderoga. It was Derek Hudnall, and he never made it back to the weigh-in on day two because it was so yes. rough. He was going to be mm. way more than 15 minutes late. Missed the classic because he took a zero mm. that day and missed the cut. It's a gamble. I've been kind of texting back and forth with a lot of the hammers that fish down in Ticonderoga. All of them have had. The, is there anybody down there? And I said not, not that we know of right now. So maybe if, maybe Davy or Mercer will know if anybody decided to make that run. But it, it, uh, the problem with making it today, it probably take you about. We had decent conditions at takeoff. It probably take you about, call it ninety minutes this morning. But it'd be that ride back. You're. Your time fishing down there today would be very limited, and tomorrow would be very limited as well. Oh, we know John Cox, who went down there years past, did not go down there. He is not making the big run, and he's on bass track with mm -hmm. four fish. And Brian Schmidt, we, we, we had him on the Bassmaster podcast, Kyle and I did, to talk preview for this event, and he said that the high water would make sense. It would be conducive for good largemouth fishing, but he feels that with the lower water the last five, six, seven years that it's been like that, that like Seth Fighter said, the largemouth overall health and population of five plus pounders has declined some to where that just because the water's high, they don't just appear, but he thinks that those fish just have not grown like they used to maybe in the Brower days, the 06, 07, 08. He just doesn't feel like there's that many five plus pounders that you could see where it's like easy to go to tie and do well. I you know there, there were a lot of locals that thought that there would be a potential 25 pound stringer caught down at tie this year, just because Ronnie, for the, the simple fact, it's been so heavily ignored for sure the for last sure. couple of years. And, and Schmidt said that the last time that he committed to tie for a four day event, he was second going into the final day. It was calm. He, he said he never had to let off the gas all four days going or coming from there. So it was perfect conditions. Gets down there the final day and, and he said, frankly, crap the bed on the final day. He doesn't know why. But ever since then, he just never, he never felt like he could depend on it for a four day tournament. So we could definitely, I, I hope we see some big bags for two days, but can, can it last four? I'm not sure. It, traditionally, Ronnie, of all the tournaments that we've covered on Lake Champlain going out of Plattsburgh, even when Ty was happening, we only had, I think, Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, we only had one winner come out of Ty. That yep. was Timmy Horton yeah. fishing yeah. one spot. Uh, sure. Traditionally, in a four-day event, even when the fishing was phenomenal down at Ticonderoga, 
it really never has held up for the most part for four straight days. Even when you're able to make that run and, and, and you have you know plenty of fishing time, for, for the most part, Ticonderoga, even though it gets you to a championship Sunday, we've seen it with Tommy Biffle, we've seen it with Steve Kennedy, it yep. seems like it doesn't quite last four days. Three, we've definitely seen that, but for very sure. hard to hold out for four days. This is a lot, not there's, all, but a lot of our <laughs> anglers said that's, look at that, there's, yeah. 490 square miles well, condensed, Tommy. Yeah. With the way gas prices are, a lot of anglers decide to stay <laughs> right around right. <laughs> work this week. Things are tough all over. Wow, that is a very telling map right there with all of your anglers gonna get out right now. Into the Inland Sea with somebody chasing down an angler of the year title, young Kyle Welcha. Can you slide that bag over into my console, if you don't mind? He's on this side, so I had to switch it up a little bit. He ain't big, but... He was a two. Got one. Kyle Welcher was our runner up in the Bassmaster Classic Lake Hartwell in 2022. He's got three fish in the boat today. Yeah, he said he is gonna really just concentrate offshore, never fished for largemouth throughout practice. Said it was all pretty much suspended smallmouth from call it 30 feet of water all the way out to mm -hmm. 100 feet of water. Said the biggest problem though is staying with those offshore schools. Said well, right when you catch one of them, those schools will break up and roll. Three fish in his live well right now. Kyle Welcher needed to pick it up just a hair. Taken out from Kyle Welcher. Over his shoulder, we see Keith Combs out there. Taking it over 100 pounds before with the Bassmaster Elite Series down at Lake Falcon. And a wind down there. Oh, a big one. Gosh, dang, eat it. Yeah, not big, but I'll take it. Little one, little feller. How many Ronnie Such have we ever seen Keith Combs ever pick up that spinning rod on his deck in the history of Bassmaster Live? <laughs> ever? No. He's threatened it, but no. Uh, but no, he's never, never followed through with it. 
think it's just there for looks. Do you think he reties the knot every night? I... <laughs> just in case. I, you know what's funny is I I did tape a show with Combs years ago where where we only caught them with a spinning rod in Texas, and it's the only time I've seen him put one in his hand. Gosh, dang. It's the smallest one. Still a little two and a half, I guess, two and three quarter. That's five. Okay, doke. That's five. That's five. Reasons. Combs starting the week 65th in Angler of the Year, 341 points. Roughly the cut right now for the Classic is 413, so about 60 and change mm -hmm. of doing so. Two, two top 20s, ish. two top 25s here, and he could inch closer if he gets a top 10 in one of these two events. What do you think, 16? He used to almost guarantee get a top 10 every well, year at the St. Two, Lawrence when it was no. just river based. Yeah. We have to remember that he'd. Three, yeah, just through. He finished strong like last year, third place or, at uh, the last tournament in the yeah. Mississippi yeah. River and then the win on at Rayburn. Rayburn. Yeah. Yeah. And I that again. think, and I think the time we're going to the St. Lawrence is more conducive to the river factoring. I know the lake will be a huge factor, but in past times when it was river dominated and the river put out good weight uh, throughout the field was the times that he has done well too. So maybe we'll see that for Keith Combs. Good to be out there with Keith today. His first day of competition, Dakota Lithium Bass Master Elite. Alex Redwine hanging there. Kyoya Fujita who held the lead for the first hour of our competition today and Brian Schmidt has been in it from the get-go, that is for sure, just as expected. We have a lot more fishing remaining on this day number one. We're fishing full field, and we will again tomorrow. We'll be right back, though, here at Champlain. Yeah! Order! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Plenty more coverage on the way. Day one of four days of fishing at the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. Legendary Lake Champlain here for, with six anglers all day long. We're going to get occasional look at other ones as well. Brian Schmidt, an angler we associate with the, oh, yeah. the Chesapeake, Potomac, Susquehanna, and all that area. But he's proved he can catch him everywhere, and he is catching him today. No doubt about it. We've kind of learned a little bit about how Brian Schmidt the last couple of years. If he smells one, he kind of puts the tournament away. And things definitely going to his plan today. Starting to see the presence of that wind now. I think that's a big one. Saw him. Come on, baby girl.
three and three quarter. Should be right around 19 pounds. Said that was that was his target weight. Yep. Just sniff around that 20 pounds today and see his game plan probably change up a little bit tomorrow as we get into Saturday. Back over to Hank Cherry for fishing his live wells. Solid quality in there. I think he's very big. He might be. He ain't fighting like a bass now. Hey, he's a good one. Three, two. Number five. Rookie Bryant Smith's five fish just popped in all at once. He's got 19 and a quarter. Wow. Three, four pounders. Ooh. Impressive. Oh, there's five. Third place. California angler Bryant Smith, like you mentioned. He's Lingering in that rookie of the year race oh, yeah. in fourth place. He's of the five rookies in our top five of rookie of the year. The least the year and had any bites, uh, so. exposure he's gotten this year. You know what right, right. Cooper yeah. Galan, Joey Savoyas, Will Davis. We, uh, caught the first competed. couple fish and make that pass again. Uh, I had one bite that didn't hook up, and I had two fish look at my bait that time. There's definitely some fish back behind us on that stretch. And like always, it looks like just looking at unofficial weights on Bass Track, there is a, you're gonna see a lot of 15 to 16 pound stringers, but there is a Massive difference when you get past that 17 and a half to 19 pound Broken range. Ball. And that's what it took last time we were here, 20, 2021. It took 17 a day to make the cut. Um, Broke which shocked Brian Schmidt because of how good he did and how good the weights were. That's only 17 a day, but. That's normally a, a good mark to be in contention. That's why I think St. Clair shocked so many people that 19 a day didn't make the cut. Yeah. There were 19 or nine 20 pound limits in day one of 21. So how many today, Ronnie? Ooh. Know, like four? Maybe five? Five? Z? I'm going to say we have more than we did the last time we were here. I, I think the fish just, oh, wow. they, they weigh heavier this time of year. Good. Such? Kind of the thought was Z. We had nine here on day one last time, 2021 and then seven on the next day, and then five and then none on the final day. I just, we got some guys really catch them, so I'm, I'm with Z, I was 10 or more. 
Now they don't want to bite, they Maybe. know something's wrong. Showing you how far down the progressive oh. insurance AOI payouts go this year. It's the 40th place, and the uh, of course the top spot. You want to be there. 100 grand. Looks like a usual Elite Series payout there. 35, 30, and then it goes down by a couple grand each. And like you said, Such, after you get past 30th, changes once again. What's well, incentive? Not too almost. bad of a kicker. Yeah, on top of a good season already. Oh, right. And all those guys get the uh, 10,000 once, once they show up to the Classic next year. So some guys will be happy that they were 41st or 42nd and were the last ones in the Classic, and they'll also be sad that they'll be the first person not to get extra payout from Angler of the Year. Well, and our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year is going to get 10,000 this year. And then, yep. of course, the Phoenix Post Big Bass of the season is 10 grand, and that's Jason Christie. So far. I'd love to nine see four, it. yeah. I don't think we're gonna see nine four, but you said that about Lay Lake too. <laughs> I had that feeling. Just had a feeling. Oh, That's a better one there. Isn't it? <laughs> Bladed. Bladed jig action right there for Hank Chair. I'll tell Come you, on. looking at that unofficial leaderboard, Tommy, it is strange to say the least. You do not see a lot of your small mouth hammers, the Johnston set, Polynix, guys that, an Austin Felix. It is a different situation yeah. here on day one in Champlain than years past. I think Johnsons don't have bass track, but Polynix, he had a 312 early. He just landed a second fish, a one pounder. That's hard to believe. Wow. Great call. Look at that call. That is a good call. Come here. Mm. Come here. Mm. You can ride, Chief. <sighs> yes. I think Jerry, it's hard to believe a decade ago he got his first win at the elite level. Uh, in a northern fishery, Muskegon, Michigan, in a postseason event <laughs> called the All-Star. Exactly right. Yes, yeah. I remember that tournament. Good event there. Kind of was a coming out party for Hank Cherry up in Muskegon, Michigan. That lake's been a little bit off this year, Tommy Sanders. Has it really? Looking at earlier today with Hank Cherry, said he had an unbelievable practice dealing with some back issues, taking his time, going up north about, call it, seven to eight miles from our takeoff in Plattsburgh. Not a lot of bites for Hank Cherry, but the quality definitely has been there. Still has a lot of room to grow. Getting it done about 30 minutes ago with a jerk bait, backing it up with a nice bladed jig bite. Ronnie, I know you are a magician with that bladed jig. Probably no better bite on planet Earth than a small mouth hitting a bladed jig. This one right here. Good day so far for Hank Cherry. Wouldn't, wouldn't call me a magician. I would just say I'm, I'm an addict. I, I don't mind zeroing okay. with it, which is I not understand. a good thing. That's not a good thing. Ronnie, since you've been covering that saltwater fishing championship, and I know your prowess in the saltwater world is about like mine. Talk a big game. Right? <laughs> but hey, right, we'll Ronnie. Survive, survive and, uh, and adapt. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar to the Redfish Cup days. I can totally relate. <laughs> you, you don't get to get bass fishing much anymore with everything on your plate. No, no. Actually, the only way I can do it is incorporate into a work trip. So I got to go to Mille Lacs the other day and shoot a feature with Josh I Douglas. and saw and got, got some, to see that. Got some smallmouth. It was down here to good to be back. We're out of here. Didn't wash my hands for three days just so I could smell like bass for a little yeah. while, you know. We got somewhere between 17 and 18. That's what that was. Living the filth. <laughs> Cherry moved up to sixth place with that 4-4. Four, four. I can get down there to that other stuff I found. Looking at Brian Schmidt hooked up right here. Ronnie, I'm curious on that Mille Lacs trip. Was there a lot of pressure up there or no? 
There was like a 950,000 boat high school tournament there that the weekend, hard. like the really? day we left. Yeah, so there was there was people fishing quite a bit. I'll be darned. My hell. All the all the resorts like Nitties were Did you full hear up. We had to swap we had to swap cabins the two days we were shooting there because they didn't have any cabin for two straight days. We could only do one here, one there. So it was popping. I don't think he does. Bass or walleye tournament? <laughs> it was bass, but there was a, there was plenty of walleye guys for sure. I don't know what it took, but uh, Z, I'll say that we went all day long and caught two four pounders. Went to dinner, decided we had 90 I minutes know, left of perfect. daylight, came back out and caught nine four pounders right in the last here. hour. So hmm. right wow. before dusk was very fun. Made what the, you can do, next time you go up there, you get a, a, a housing crunch, rent one of those little uh, fishing houses that they drag out on the lake. Tommy, that's know. what that's I did. That's what I did every single fall when the elites would finish. I'd go to Mille Lacs and I'd get live in one of those oh. ice houses on land. Way to go. I didn't need electricity. Way I mean, to just go. to charge you the boat. You don't yeah. need electricity. Yeah, need electricity. Cool. Well, what a beautiful place. Plattsburgh, New York, right up here in the Adirondacks. Just gorgeous, gorgeous scenery. Beautiful time of the year to be here as well. And for Alex Wet Red Wine, it has been a beautiful day of 21 pounds plus. Upping his lead there, Fujita hanging in there, and Bryant Smith, the rookie, coming up there to inhabit that third spot there. We've got good fishing going on today, and plenty more is on the way. Yeah! No way! You're watching the Fox Sports presentation of BASS. About midway through our third hour of fishing for the 102 anglers out here. Day one, Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. We have not even heard a rumor of a largemouth bass yet, but I'm sure it's going on. None. Somewhere, somewhere, maybe, maybe, we'll find out. More to, more to find out during the course of this day, that's always the case. Look at Alex Redwine hanging in there on the top of the leaderboard with smashing day so far out here on Lake Champlain. And look at Hank Cherry there in sixth place. Hank coming in here in 42nd place. Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. First guy out of the classic cut. That's why we got a camera in the boat with him today. And he is uh, he is paid off for us. He has caught him, Mark Zona. Exactly right, Tommy. Mercury move of the day. An angler needing to catch him. Been a little bit shaky the last year, Hank Cherry. Even get back into that Bassmaster Classic, having a very solid day. Numbers game, not there for Hank Cherry, but the quality's been there, very vocal. He had an extremely solid practice here. Your Mercury move of the day. We said it coming into today, Tommy Sanders. Obviously, kind of the beginning of the fourth quarter for this year in the mm -hmm. Bassmaster Elite Series season. Needing to put him in the live. Well, he has done that. Your Mercury move of the day. Hank Cherry unofficially, 17 pounds and 12 ounces. Hanging solid to make next year's Bassmaster Classic from Hank Cherry. Gonna slink on in to the Inland Sea. So much history with Seth Fighter started out on smallmouth. Looks like he might have got into an area we have seen in years mm -hmm. past. Seth Fighter live largemouth fishing. Hey. Hey. Oh, God, it's a big one, dude. I ain't that big. Yes. All right. There we're we go. Be all right. We knew one. We're going to be all right. Oh, he looked like a five pounder coming out of there. He's not big, but he's a lot better than what we got. We're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. God, I thought that was a great big one when I first saw him. Just sat on it. Didn't do nothing with it. I wasn't even sure that was a bite. Makes me feel better about this. So what? Uh, uh, two and three quarter. Marty getting flashbacks of that six pounder that he caught out underneath one of the boat 
boat slips, I think, in this marina in 20... 21, wasn't it? I think yep. it was... I think it was... 2020? He's caught a big largemouth every single year, on, but I think the one In I 2000... Was... Last time here, he had a 5'11". Yep. In 2020, he had a 6'6", six, six, which I think has beaten every big bass here. And on day four, he had a 5'1". Yeah. Other than the three-day tournament we had here in 2017 due to weather, which I think is the last time we've had weather shorten a tournament for the Elite Series, I, I believe. Uh, we've lost hours, but not a full day like we did at Champlain in 2017. Other than that one, every single year it's been 78 <coughs> to 83 pounds for the other four Elite Series for the winning weight. Mm -hmm. So, wouldn't, see, wouldn't be surprised to see. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Well, what a remarkable record for Sev here at this particular fishery, Champlain. Top five three times, starting in 2017. Yeah, and if you really kind of look at the history of what we have seen with Seth Fighter here, not holding the blue trophy, but really, really consistent every single time. Seth Fighter is exactly right, friendo. Mm. Looking at what he's done through the years, Tommy, it's been very, very basic. He always starts on the New York side up near Rouse's Point area, catching smallmouth and backs it up later in the degree. He looks like he's 15 years old right there. <laughs> but what he would always do is really start off on the New York side and then make his way to the Inland Sea and chase largemouth. The smallmouth really not playing earlier today for Seth Fighter. We're gonna rewind. There's that big one yeah. from a couple years ago. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, come here. Come here! Oh yeah. That that perked everyone up there. Oh my god. The one big Catch thing. a big one like that. That's that what will I was gonna... make you want to fire up a dart and set fighters boat every single time. <laughs> Look at how he backed it up. So, and what was funny about that little marina that yes, we've sir. seen him in years past, look, seeing him there yes, right sir. now, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Almost every single time Seth Fighter has come to this lake, mixed bags, a little bit slower today, but uh, Seth Fighter, a lot of history here on Lake Champlain. That was not your Mercury move of the day. <laughs> Yet. like a nice quiet place to get out of the, the crashing wind when it gets ginned up out there. You can get some fish in there. Hey, Alex Redwine, our leader, has called again. He's got rid of all his three pounders with a 470. He's up yeah, to 21, 14. Wow. Which is about what was leading it on day one last time. His buddy Gross with 21, 13, I believe. Interesting being the only largemouth we have seen today. Isn't that something? Amazing. It's gotten slow. Got a couple fish following us, but they won't commit.
Over the years, guys, we've had a couple smallmouth areas factor, notorious places. We've seen really deep water smallmouth factor as well. And then we've also seen some of those shallower flats, some of the some of the other techniques come into play. As I'm over at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge, I wanted to bring in some Lake Master mapping to show you some of those areas where you could be 10 miles, five miles apart and be fishing totally different water for totally different uh, train of thought smallmouth. You could be out in the abyss like we've seen a lot of our anglers with forward facing sonar and a lot of these places that have really, really sharp contour changes, uh, a lot of depth changes there. As you can see, it goes from the red is obviously the shallowest. Then you've got the gray in that five to 10 foot range. Green is, is in that nine to 12 foot range. Then you start to get out in the teens, 20s and 40s and it drops off into the main channel. Then when you go maybe on the New York side of things, uh, up north in a notorious area, some of these places, it's a lot more gradual of a depth change. You see, obviously it's close to the bank, shallower, but then from 12 feet to 20 feet, it is a long way until you get to the deeper channels and, and things like that. So we'll keep an eye out for if anybody works in the shallower largemouth game. A lot of these places, this is accounted for. I took the depth highlight put three extra feet of water, two extra feet of water on this body on this body of water, and it opens up a lot of these flats that used to be so shallow, the smallmouth be here one day, gone the next. Some of those places may have them, and we may see, at least when it's not tremendously windy and pounding in on those areas, if some shallow areas for the smallmouth will factor. But really, when you get in that inland sea, it's a totally different picture than some of the New York places and bays and up north that we see at Lake Champlain depth-wise, contour-wise. Seth Fighter, largemouth fishing. Not a largemouth. How do you do that? Little snakester. Koya Fujita with a four on. pounders over 20 pounds, second bag. 20 pounds, 12 ounces, second place. I don't know, dude. Sorry. Ronnie, where is it 400 feet deep on this lake? I've seen that listed as the deepest part of the lake. Uh, I could I could pull it up and look around, but I think that's where Champy lives. At least oh. it, that's where, that's where oh. Champy winters. That's right. Pierre de Champlain and the Osable chasm. The Osable chasm. Yes. Yes. I, right. I, I took. I took the scorpion there. One, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous area. Is it beautiful? Is it? Is it? Is it just a uh, breathtaking? It's fantastic. It, it really is. Yeah. Yes. I want to go there. Had a weather day in a. Had a weather day in a tournament there, about 64 years ago, <laughs> and uh, that's where we went for the day. It looks like Tommy. There's some contours of 400 to 410 feet around the uh, Cannon Point, Cedar Beach, Garden Island area down south. Okay, so it's down south. Or south of Burlington, That's Shelburne. Like Lake Tahoe deep down there. Yeah, up north it's real shallow, Tommy. It's like 210 feet. Deep. Okay. <laughs> If you're going to drop your phone, drop it up north. Yeah. It is, it is interesting to go from a Lake St. Clair where you're catching them in 9 to 11, 9 to 12 feet of water, maybe 18 at the most, and you come here and 18 might be the least other than the largemouth guys that they're fishing. Yeah. Tommy, full on. disclosure. This area it looks I, good on map. I just got a text. I completely lied about going, taking Karen to the Osable Chasm. I actually unhooked the boat and sent her alone. I, I didn't want to go that day. She told me how nice it looked. Oh, okay. I have no idea what the Osable just, Chasm just looks like. To clarify, I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's you know. I apologize. Sometimes we remember things differently than they went down. Uh, exactly right. Yeah.
I don't expect you to be there in the future either. I'll tell you that. No, no, I <laughs> if there's, totally turn it down. And there's a lake I'm very, there, very consistent. Yeah, very consistent. <laughs> Ready to push on into hour number four of fishing here. About eight hours fishing time for all of our 102 anglers and four separate flights. During the course of the day, there's your leaderboard, Alex Redwine. Man, terrific day. Fujita's now busted up there. He's looking good as well. Man, oh man, with Brian Schmidt. Brian Schmidt, Brian Smith, and Maddie Wong all in there. It was rookie of the year. What an incredible rookie. I mean, Joey Fuentes, see Fuentes. First guy since since Cobb to win two in his rookie season, sitting on top wow. of that one right there, and still not able to shake the likes of Fujita and Will Davis Jr. and now Bryant Smith. Cooper Gallant played big last time around Lake St. Clair. Man, it's a big, big rookie class, big, big in terms of catching, catching ability. And we'll see the see some of them in action this week. You can be sure of that. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Still fishing the first half of the day, the end of the first half of this day at the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. Lake Champlain, what a bucket list place. Bass fishing decade in and decade out. It's just one of the one of the top places on everyone's list. And boy, we spent a lot of time with this guy, Brian Sh Brian Schmidt today. And oh yeah, even that. Ooh, well, exactly right, Tommy. First one of this tournament, this Elite Series event here on Lake Champlain. Brian Schmidt trying to defend that 2021 title here. Said he definitely had a great practice and really kind of watch what, what he has done today was basically his game plan do not touch his large mouth areas wanted to hover around 18 to 20 pounds well he did that early said you pretty much had to hunt these schools down throughout practice well that was not the case this morning he landed on a school and sniffed around 17 and a half to 18 pounds in about the first 60 minutes of fishing this morning still a lot of room to grow the one thing that we're going to keep our eye on though as we get into our afternoon sesh here on Bassmaster Live is the presence of big wind predicted today. Power pole replay of the day again. Brian Schmidt here on Lake Champlain. From there, we're gonna slink a little bit south, Tommy, and get mm. over to Seth Fighter, doing a little marina fishing that we've seen in years past. Seth Fighter, Bassmaster Live. Austin Felix's fish just came in. He's got two four pounders, got 19 and a half. He just uh, took over third place. Uh -oh. Feels good. Get away from it. Yeah. Junk. Little junk. Little junk. Little junker. A little better. That's five now. Let's get this ship back together, boys. Come on. A little better. We're gonna be all right. We're gonna be all right. Get three more like that, and I want about that long. Then. Then we look like we know what we're doing. <sighs> All amped up, can't even cast. That's it. Gone three and a quarter. Ninth in angler of the year points coming in to today, Seth Fighter. Yeah, he was expecting three easy cuts up north and he stumbled at St. Clair mm -hmm. a little bit and I got to talk to him two weeks ago when I was in Minnesota and he's 
really a little bit worried, even though his track record was so good at Champlain, he just knew it was going to be a little different and wasn't sure if the largemouth would hold up, but they're helping him today. Mm -hmm. You saw red wines uh, yeah, that, go red. He yeah, just held up to 22, too. Wow. I think he's probably like 14 Jason inches, but I don't even know. I've never had to worry 10. about what a keeper is here, you know? It's like, oh, just put him in a box if they're three, two and a half, three pounds, you know? That was the right one, wasn't it? Yeah, it had to be. We have five in here now. Right. Probably burn this sucker to the ground today. There's a five pounder in here, dude, I promise you. Yeah, it wasn't much of a call. But I know he's a keeper. You want to know why? They weigh him in right there. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what that pick girl's doing in here, but most of them are good ones. Oh, yeah. Seth knows all the arithmetic that goes on with bass <laughs> tournaments, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. A little retread action right there earlier today. Starting out on the New York side, fishing up north. Areas we've seen in years past. Little bit slow for Seth Fighter to start the day. Backing it up with some large mouth here in the last hour. Couple fun facts. Big Minnesota Vikings fan. Not that big a fan of Kurt Cousins, though. Really? Seth Fighter, I'll throw Whoa, one other easy. thing out, Tommy. Hmm. I spend a lot of time with Seth Fighter. You'll notice something. Fine, Seth man. Fighter is not a shorts guy, does not wear them, does not own them. That's right. Starting to put together Never some. Of <laughs> I know it's a very, very odd trait right Nugget. there. A couple upgrades here in the last hour, getting the wheels back on the bus for Seth Fighter. So much good history here. Did you watch the, the uh, quarterback right. show? Yeah, in the wind a lot yes, Z. Kirk Cousins was fantastic on that. Ah, uh, that. See, I wasn't. I'm not a fan. Um, you were. I became a bigger it. fan. <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm just no. dirty like he is. I guess. Obviously, a very, really, really, really good dude, Kirk Cousins. I like that home that Patrick Mahomes built in that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll just say I wouldn't mind if Cousins played for my Cardinals. Got to watch that. Kirk's kind of a raw, raw kind of guy, isn't he? He's like Mister. Hard good target. dude. Yeah. Good, yeah. good yeah. dude. Like yeah. everyone's favorite team. Mr. Motivation. Yeah. 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 Have a little AOI update. Cobb is 38th right now. He's still holding on to first. Welcher's 50th, so he's dropped a little. He's second. Drew Cook is standing 21st. He's in third now. And Brian Schmidt, who's fifth place, is fourth in AOI. With Shakur at 10th, he's jumped up to fifth. Wow. A little movement going on. Not over. Kind of kind of got a feeling that angler of the year could go down to the last day this season. These are big ins. Would love to see uh, eighth and ninth going to the final day and duking it out for whoever finishes highest that day wins AOI. That would be yeah. pretty cool. And Fujita's gaining ground on Joey Sifuentes in the rookie of the year. So what, Sifuentes has fallen to 20th. So there's 18 points if Vegeta stays second. Mm. Started 25 ahead.
Not big. A nice one. Ruin that hook. Have not seen a true five pounder. Alex Redwine with our Phoenix Boats Big Bass 413. Caleb Summerall, however, just landed a 410. Take second spot right now. I think he was in the top 10 last time we were here. I think he ended his yeah, season with right. two yeah, top 10s. A lot of people picking him fantasy wise. I'm not all, not everybody, but a lot of people. Did had him you? on their list. No, I, I didn't. Why didn't you? Well, I'm, that's what I'm asking Holy. myself. Ronnie, was this the was Champlain the event where Caleb Summerall ran out of gas? No, that would be. Uh, I think that was St. Lawrence. Was it? It was our it, first year in Clayton, and I think he went to Waddington. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. One thing to really watch the rest of the day here on Bassmaster Live. It is supposed to get ripping here in the next hour or so. Not that it's been calm all morning long, but we're gonna we're gonna definitely see some big wins before the weigh-in with Dave Mercer later today. Sorry, it was pretty flat all through practice. You yeah, guys absolutely. were wanting a little bit of wind. Yeah, maybe not this much. We got plenty more coverage on the way, just approaching the halfway point in our fishing day here on Lake Champlain. Brian Schmidt, the numbers guy today, our numbers guy just anyway, has caught him at will basically. Hank Cherry, not so, not so much numbers, but good solid fish in the live well. Has him in the top 10. Keith Combs as well. You know, our coverage continues. We've got plenty more of it on the way. Live coverage, live mix continues after this. After that, Dave and Davey, Dave Mercer, Davey Hyde giving us on location action from Plattsburgh, New York. And then all the way to 3 p.m. That's when the weigh-in begins. Actually, it'll begin right at 3 p.m. So you can uh, watch continu continuously. That is for sure. Stick around, plenty of things happening on day one. Dakota Lithium, Bassmaster Elite. I'm getting smarter, man.
Ridiculous. I think there's 50 of them right here. Please stop.
We're going to have to put our thinking caps on here. We're getting bit, you know, but they're just not. I don't know what happened to our four pounders. Four pounder is very important. Yeah, we did work on this area pretty good. Now I think it's got a little east in it. I'm just walking in my head, playing in my head some scenarios I could do. I got all their stuff. I mean, we've caught a lot of fish. Man, oh man, I don't know what to do. I don't know, bro. I don't know. Let, let me let me fix these couple rides, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna think here. Like, well, no, it's a it as the crow flies. It ain't that far. No, it's you got to go back out in into Lake Champlain and uh, run up. The fish up there, they definitely didn't seem real thick either. Like, these are healthy that we're catching, but some of the ones I caught in practice around here are beast. Yeah, I mean, you, you go, whoa, when you, when you see one of them, you're like, holy moly. Hardly even anybody out here anymore. I think they all went largemouth fishing. Right? There's four out there. And 
ham. That's it. Yeah, Gull Island. It, it's a popular area. So I'll tell you what I have noticed so far, 100% they've been on that upper portion of the, of the ridge. Seems like the further you go down it, that doesn't, could be a current deal. In practice, they were stacked up right here. Let's go right over there, crank up. Uh, That's some good ones right there behind us. How did I just drift over them suckers? We're gonna go all in on this front facing sonar. I say they need goggles that just shows what you're looking at when you look around. Like VR yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that would be badass, actually. <laughs> Doug's got one of those Oculus yeah. VR games. It's actually pretty cool. I love those videos of people using that thing and like running into the wall. Yeah. Oh, my son hits bikes. He hits stuff all the time. <laughs> Is he still boxing? Oh, yeah. I've been watching. I've been watching your posts. He loves it. I cannot believe how much bait's over here today. I wanna fish my grass up there, but. About to go like another 200 yards maybe and then I'm gonna run back up and do it again because I don't know if this winds get worse. And I saw a bunch out there for a minute. I wanna do it while. <laughs> yeah. Got it here. yeah. I caught this is actually kind of where I caught them in practice, but they could be out there now.
one of the swindles catching it. He told me he was going back in the bay there. There's some grass. It was all good. Someone texted me and said, they love hearing us talking about walking boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were probably live anyway. We yeah. were talking about something weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was seeing a bunch out there and I'm not seeing it, but I'm still seeing the bait, what's strange. I don't see a fish there, but that bait is like coming up. Oh, it is fish there, three of them. I don't think it's bass. Are there small bass? I think it is bass actually, but I don't think they're very big. Missed him. I think they're little ones. Eat my bait off? Huh? Well, oh, another one didn't bite it. There's so much bait, it's like blacking out my graph. I can't see hardly. Man, it would be real sucky to be a shad. <laughs> or a minnow. <laughs> like you eat plankton and everything eats you. Literally everything. A bird eats you if you come to the top, if you go to the bottom, a bass eats you.
You, that is your old purpose in life. You fulfilled your purpose if something eats you. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> if everything seems bad, just think you could be a shad. In a deep part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna hit them. We're drifting 900 miles per hour. See my bait, please. And I don't know where they went. So annoying. God, there's a bunch of them too. They're behind us now. <sighs> oh, they chased it and I reeled it back. I didn't know they were on it. It. There might not be big ones. Still got that one little bitty one in there. I'm actually pretty good at landing my bait on them, but a lot of times I don't have confidence that I did because I don't see the bait and I reel it back. That's what just happened there.
He slammed that bag over. He's a 3-4. Come on, dude. Sure, he. I gotta fix him up probably.
about to troll over here and throw in my grass real quick before we make this drift across. Oh, pretty nice, like a three and a half pound largemouth over here in practice in this grass. Right. And a couple of smallmouth too. I used to catch them good here, but you, like last year, you could see the grass. Like you could see the little clumps of it, yeah, right. and it was easy. Now you just gotta, yeah. yeah. Now there was that little cabbage grass, like the, the little green leaves on it. Yeah. Now you just gotta fling and hope you land in good clump. I swear it was a lot easier to fish shallow out here back when the lake was down. Coming up here, I was like convinced, like I'm just gonna fish for largemouth the whole time. It's not right. And 21. 21, I never weighed in a smallmouth. Yeah, I fished like 18th. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I had all large mouth. I caught him right over there. And I caught him off docks back there. It was fun. I had like 20 a second day, all large mouth. Yeah. Make a drift across here. If I don't catch any out of the grass, we're gonna stay back out there. Should be the appropriate line for my grass. <laughs> yeah, last time when the lake was down, it was the dumbest dock bite you've ever seen. I caught like 25 in a row off one dock. Wow. Now they weren't all big ones, but it was fun. It was, yeah, kinda. It was like docks with just anything with big enough platform and then cab, I caught a lot of cabbage grass. You know how like Lake Hartwell, you know. Yeah, oh yeah. You catch them on a dock, like that the whole lake. The whole lake, yep. Out here it just seems like it was the bigger, like more surface area docks. There's a bunch of like little bitty docks, you know. Grass has leaned over today. I don't know if it's gonna work as good.
We got the one in the grass. Small mouth. Pretty good one. He's skinny though, he's not as fat as those other. Yeah. Come here, buddy. I can't grab you. Got him, he's just skinny. He's still not bad though. He's not hooked that bad, but I think I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's see. I need to hit spot lock so we don't drift into the oblivion here. He'll definitely get rid of a two pounder. He's about three and a quarter. He won't quit flapping. Yeah, about three and a quarter. Um, yeah, roughly 17 and a half or so. Get rid of two. That's a definitely a good swap. Oh, he hit me in the, where you don't want to get hit with a small mouth. Good swap. He's happy. We got one more under three pounds. Three tie. That was a good little different one. We've been drifting around out there in the middle, got up here on a little high spot. Maybe there's another one. You made two distinctive decisions and both decisions paid off. It worked. That is not the appropriate hook. Hook that one downward somehow, like not up. I don't know how that happened. He didn't gut hook him, just. Hope he's up. Yeah, kind of, but like the very back, like weird, kind of weird. Never really hooked one there for. I think it'll be all right. As long as we don't beat him to smithereens. <laughs> Wacky rig fluke stick on a drop shot. Had to, had to continue my wacky rigging up north. Just added a weight to him. Actually a fluke stick junior, not a fluke stick. See if we can catch another one. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops.
Welcome in for the eighth stop of 2023, the second last stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. And we return to Plattsburgh, New York, the scene of many, many incredible Bassmaster memories. And those memories are going to be made here in just a few hours, literally. The pressure is on. There is eight days of competition. We have our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year race. We have our Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race to decide all sorts of Bassmaster Classic berths. And Davey Height, I would say the water with our on-location coverage is unhospitable. That's a positive way to put it. That is a very positive way to put it. I've been out there. You have, too, on this particular lake. It was so beautiful this morning. And it's still beautiful standing here on the shore. But... Calm conditions. They had extremely calm conditions in practice. Some of the anglers were even saying, I wish the wind would blow. The smallmouth bite a little better when the wind. And I'm like, oh, do not, do not ever say that here on Lake Champlain. It has picked up from very calm this morning, probably two or three mile an hour uh, to about 15 to 20. Out of the south, which is a big deal here, as you well know, this lake really lays north to south. And when it comes north or south, especially if you're on the northern end from the south, Oh, it can be very interesting. We'll have some stories that weigh in, no doubt. And the scary thing is, it gets worse as you come back. So you're yes. down in Ticonderoga, and you're thinking, ah, I figure these are the conditions I'm running back. You're halfway home, and it's way worse than you expected. What happens then, Davey? Well, you-, you start trying to rush things. You try to get in a little bit of a hurry, and that's when you start, uh, let's say, just taking a little water over the front sometimes. And then you start taking equipment off your boat if you really get in a hurry doing that. Um, So, honestly, if it continues to blow like this this afternoon, the trip from Mallets Bay to check-in here will be very interesting. We'll see some guys with rain suits on, and there's hardly a cloud in the sky. Well, that just makes me think of one group. I hope the service crews are relaxing. I hope they had a very relaxing morning, kicked back, had a great breakfast, because they're going to be busy this afternoon, I would imagine. Let's have a look at our Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. Leaderboard and Alex Redwine for the first time is an Elite Series leader with 22 pounds and 2 ounces. And Koya Fujita, just when everybody wants to give this Rookie of the Year race to um, the Cowboy, Koya says, I'm not going out quietly. He is not. Well, he is a little quiet, I will say that. But he's not going out quietly as far as Rookie of the Year. You're exactly right, Dave. And just so interesting to see uh, the mixture of anglers we have. And some of the smallmouth hammers that we're used to seeing. Let's say a Seth Fighter, the Johnson Brothers. I don't see them there right now. Maybe they just don't have their back, bass track going. Well, let's catch up on all the doings with your Toyota Midday Report. And let's start with an eight-time classic qualifier, Keith Combs. Yeah, definitely got to watch Keith Combs when you come up here. And he's known certainly to be a southern guy that likes to crank. Well, you can certainly throw a crankbait up north right there. He's swinging a nice small mouth in this morning for Keith Combs on a crankbait. He's not a guy that likes to throw a drop shot as much. He's more of a jerkbait. Here's a really good fish on a jerkbait for Keith Combs. So he's a fun guy to watch. Uh, had a good start. Not as many numbers for him today, but a good mixture of seeing some crankbait and jerkbaits mixed in. Your progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader, the COWB, Brandon Cobb. Well, you really couldn't drop up any better coming into the final two events back to back up north with only one point separating Kyle Welcher and Brandon Cobb. Brandon Cobb having a good solid day today, currently unofficially in 18th place. Uh, last I checked, I think he was around about 14 or 15 pounds, some, somewhere in there. So a good solid start, plenty of time to upgrade. So a good day for Brandon Cobb. And a lot of people thought, man, when you go up north, he's going to lose that lead. And he's really held on good. A good tournament last last event there at St. Clair and having a good solid start here today. The one scary thing is he told me earlier this week, he said the one thing that he worries about is rough water. He just says, it's not something he's comfortable in fishing in. And he said, I, to win Angler of the Year, I need the weather to play in my favor a little bit. Another guy who's not a huge fan of the rough oh, water well. is Hank Cherry. talks about it all the time. But, man, he catches them in the north. He really does. And i got to expand on that a little bit. If you don't know Hank Cherry very well, he is one angler that, let's say, respects rough water <laughs> more so than, than any other angler out here he does not like it let's just say that i think he has some vertigo issues also but we can always count on hank cherry catching 
really good waste, whether it's largemouth or smallmouth, when he comes north, he just seems to, to really just blend in very, very well, mm -hmm. being from North Carolina. Catches a lot of them on a jerk bait you see here. Some of them also mm -hmm. on, a, on a drop shot and a Ned rig. But, but Hank Cherry loves to throw a jerk bait. And one thing about it, he might not li like the rough conditions, but throwing a jerk bait and when they go like peanut butter and jelly, I must say. Works out good for Hank Cherry, a four-time Bassmaster winner, and obviously the back-to-back -back Bassmaster Classic champion. But if anybody is the scariest angler in the field, I'm not a big fantasy fishing player. But if I was, I'm going to tell you right now, you're insane if you did not pick Brian Schmidt. Two wins here, one in the Opens and one in the Elite Series, and defending champion. Yeah, the thing that's so interesting about Brian Schmidt, last time we were here, I think 21, I spent a good bit of time with Ashley out in the boat. To, you know, we're filming different things, different people. And you seem to, on all of these lakes, we saw it at St. Clair a few weeks ago. Even though you have a huge body of water, you're going to see an area of the lake that's really happening, and you're going to have a group of boats. It was Anchor Bay at, at Lake St. Clair. And there's always, like, the inland sea, you're going to have a group. Rouse at this point, you're going to have a group here. Brian Schmidt fishes isolated things that not a lot of other guys fish, and I think that's what makes him so, so good here because he kind of runs his own deal, and he always catches a mixture of largemouth and smallmouth. So he's not quite up there according to the bass track where we thought he might be, but you always have to look out for him here. I think he'll be a player on Sunday. He sure will, and another guy that if you didn't pick him in fantasy fishing, what are you thinking? Seth Fighter, three top fives in a row here, and man, he has knocked at the door many times. Will he finally win a regular season Elite Series event this week? I think one of the things that makes him so so effective here, he fishes for largemouth and smallmouth here also. He it was a bass, it was a big one. He likes yeah, to fish for those brown cool. fish, but Damn, when things aren't happening, he can there. certainly mix it up and go and look for some vegetation and catch largemouth. I think that's what he's done Damn. today. He started out with smallmouth. And... Go a little shallower for the largemouth. So it's... You think it'll be a mixed bag to win this week? <sighs> if or it's all Brian... smallmouth or all largemouth? For the first time in a while, I think... I tend to say, talking to the anglers, it'll be all smallmouth. But they wanted it to be all largemouth. That's what I felt yeah. talking to the anglers. Yeah. Like, how many of them, really, maybe only John Cox was the one that said, hey, I don't have a smallmouth rig in the boat. I am all largemouth. But the, you, every single one of them, even when they were said they were going for smallmouth, you felt like they tried yeah. to make the largemouth the thing. So even Greg Hagney. You know, we know how these guys, sometimes they they kind of send you in the direction they want you to go with their thoughts. Uh, and he would not have been talking like this had he been planning on fishing largemouth. And he was like, man, it should really be happening, but but I'm going smallmouth fishing, which is very unusual for Greg Hagney. I'm sure he would rather be up there fishing for largemouth. It's a tiny baby. Death Fighter, not shocking to anybody that's watched the Elite Series over the last number of years. Having a decent start to his day, day number one, stop number eight. And Seth Fighter catching him early and often. Yeah, Seth Fighter started out, like we said, with small mouth, and you can see they weren't the size that he was hoping they would be. And then you see him mix it up, goes into the marina, around some boat docks, catches some large mouth, and I think that's what's made him somebody, you know, Three top fives is very, very impressive, no matter where you are. But the, the combination of fishing for both largemouth and smallmouth. But here's the one thing that I think is maybe hurting Seth Fighter a little bit here this time and some of the anglers that maybe we expected to see. They don't, the fish don't seem to be relating to the boulders here like they have in the past. They, a lot of the fish are suspended over deeper water, more so than I can ever remember. The high water having something to do with that. We're here a little later in the year. All those things could factor in. Out live on the water, four box. Top two boxes, obviously, the top two in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, Brandon Cobb and Kyle Welcher. Oh. 
sure he got. Then of course a great shot of Keith Combs and Seth Fighter. Yeah, so we certainly have an angler year race on our on our minds here with just two events left and one point separating Kyle Welcher and Brandon Cobb coming into this morning and you see that gap now is much bigger but I will say Kyle Welcher did a great job at St. Clair. It's kind of a similar situation. Cobb made up a, a lot of room on on Kyle Welcher, but he made that cut, was able to fish Saturday, make some more of those points back up. So we we like to keep track of it, but you have to wait till at least the end of the day and then Tomorrow being a big, big day for a lot of these races. Tomorrow afternoon, being able to make that cut or not being able to make that That's cut is going to the rookie year and the angler year. In it's a big, big deal. Brandon Cobb came into this concerned with the rough weather. Said that's the one thing he feared. With 17 pounds, four ounces, he's got his job done. You got to feel to defend today. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he would like to have 22 pounds, but if he's saying 17 four, as we know, most guys, that means they've got about 18 pounds, which is a good solid day. He's definitely in good shape for today. On the other hand, Kyle Welcher would two decent catches can be right there too. Yeah, 17 pounds is, is certainly. Doable for him this early in the day. Amazing story, really. We talk big bass, big stage, big dreams. And if Brandon Cobb is able to pull this off, and there's a lot of fishing yet to, to pin it on anybody. But man, I think when he was 12 years old, he entered a coloring contest. <laughs> One A fishing trip with a two time angler of the year named Davey Height. And now you are maybe commentating his season where he becomes an angler. Like when you just right. really think of that. We're about to crank up and run just in the middle again. I think my grass is about played out. I think there's probably more in here, but I need to be able to pick it apart to catch them. They we're drifting so fast and bouncing around going up. I know there's more in here. I mean, it's really, you just got to stay where you think fish are, but you just don't fish it as effectively. That's all there is to it. You go too fast or either you bounce in the waves and uh, spook some fish probably. You got to just, just stay where you think fish are though. I wish that fish would bite a lot better like dragging something because you can drag and drift with the wind, but I just haven't done that good like actually dragging. Date from Cobb and go back to that story. But <laughs> how cool is that to see it come full circle? Oh, it's it's really amazing. Wouldn't that be something that I'll, I'll be looking for a coloring contest for 50 year olds to go <laughs> go fishing with the uh, reigning angler of the years if all that does unfold. But geez, Dave, yeah, you're you you really the more you think about that, the more it's surreal. It, it really is. Brandon Cobb came into this event with a one-point lead in Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points, and I don't think he was going to hold his sights set on one target. The ultimate target just to wait at the end of the day. So I was really excited to come Champlain because my history here, I've, I've done really well fishing for large mouse and catching some small mouth mixed in. So I think at Champlain this week, oh, you'll see some big large mouth caught. I hope to catch a few myself, but I think predominantly it's going to be smallmouth dominated. It's, they're getting, with the front facing sonar now, you're able to catch smallmouth that you essentially wouldn't have had any chance to catch before, just roamers out on bait, swimming around. So it's much easier to catch the smallmouth, but I think the largemouth still could play because they're, they're big. They're, they're bigger, you have a better chance to catch a kicker largemouth than a kicker smallmouth, you just catch solid average smallmouth. Yeah! Another! No way! 
you're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Welcome into our on location coverage here in beautiful Lake Champlain, Plattsburgh, New York. The Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. And what an incredible fishery it is. One of the few fisheries that you literally have as good a shot winning a large mouth as you do small mouth. But let's have a look at the biggest deciding factor here, and that's your TH Marine Weather Watch. Currently 79 degrees, partly cloudy, south wind at 15. Davey Height, I think that is, I'm not calling the TH <laughs> Marine Weather Watch bogus, but it feels a lot more than that to me right now. It really does. Uh feels a little more like 20 than 15 but that's typically you know what your weather forecast is going to be a little more on the water itself so tomorrow high of 74 low 58 storms possibly in the afternoon south wind again 5 to 10 i hope that's right yesterday they were calling for a little more than that so we'll see i hope that th marine weather watch is just perfect 5 to 10 tomorrow sounds a lot better than what i was seeing this morning in the forecast Always the biggest factor. You know, there'll be a lot of chatter next week going into the St. Lawrence River. Will we see 100 again? But just like this tournament, it all comes down to one thing, and Mother Nature controls the result. But also, it's, it's part of the reason that these fisheries are as good as they are, Davey. Yeah, it, it keeps a lot of the fishing pressure off of them because you can't, can't just plan on going on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and necessarily get to go on those days. You have to have to respect the weather when you're on these lakes. This lake, not technically a great lake right now, but it seems great when the wind's blowing 20 miles an hour out of the south. I can it's, tell you that. It's sure going to feel like <laughs> one when they come across that point into yeah. this bay. The direction is a big deal. We were talking about that just a few minutes ago before we came on live. Uh, you know what? Uh, uh, east or west wind here is uh, easier to navigate than a, a, especially a south wind on this end of the lake. You know, you it, it has a long, long distance to build those rollers from one footers to three and four footers. Four box Cobb, Schmidt, Combs, and Fider. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Done everything except get a four pounder, you know, um, but <laughs> I'm just not getting any, any activity, not seeing them follow my bait. This area that we're in, I mean, there's, there's, to me, there's not a lot of options. Um, you could drag a tube or something like that around in here. There's just so much vegetation. I feel like uh, I feel like I'm probably just going to have to relocate and hope for the best. But I want to stay here because I know quality is here. interesting to hear Keith Combs and Brandon Cobb talk about the amount of vegetation they're fishing around when they're targeting the the smallmouth a little more so many of our tournaments you see in the past anglers targeting just isolated boulders or little rock piles and there's lots of rocks here it's not not like Lake St. Clair where you have very very few places with hard bottom lots of rocks but but a lot of the anglers talking this week about the bait fish suspending over vegetation, even outside the vegetation in deeper water. There's an incredible amount of current here on Lake Champlain, mm -hmm. uh, especially when the wind picks up. It starts moving a lot of water. And, and with that current, that vegetation will lay over. You've seen it. You, you do so much great filming under the water. You see that. And it'll make these fish relocate because instead of straight vegetation where they are in all these little holes, it lays I mean, over and exposes that bait, and the bait will actually leave. And they're biting, so it's like it could easily be a five. Trust me. Is it ideal condition? No. Nope. 
you feel they leave the entire weed bed, or do they relocate on the weed bed, or is that situation? I think there's both. Yeah. Uh, so the you, you have to think about the cover, not just for the fish, but for the bait. When you know when they're feeding on crawfish, those crawfish really aren't going to go anywhere. But you know the the shad, the the perch, the alewives, you know you just name the bait. They need cover too to to survive and. When that vegetation is standing up, they kind of get in it and have it around them for, for cover and concealment. When it lays over, if, if they're relating to it, they're over the top. They're easy prey. So I think it'll create a feeding frenzy initially, but then those bait will be pushed off to, to, some, uh, to somewhere else for cover. It's, you know, fishing through the years, it, you know, I really learned, started to learn a lot more when you start thinking about, so what, what is the bait doing? What, why is yeah. the bait doing this or why is the bait doing that? You see bait fish in like two inches of water and it's August. I see it down south. I see it up here. And you're like, why is that bait? That shallow water is their cover. If there's no other cover available, they're, they're always trying to find somewhere to hide uh, because there's a lot of things out there that want to eat them. <laughs> a lot of things with teeth uh, in this neck of the woods that want to eat them. Kyle Welcher came into this event in second place in Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. Hot off a second place finish just a year ago at the Bassmaster Classic. But he wants to seal the deal on this one. And let's catch up with his day on day number one, Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. Yeah, Kyle Welcher got off to a good start this morning. Not surprising. Here's, here's something that really comes to mind. Mm -hmm. When's the last time we get this far in the season and you have a Kyle Welcher or Brandon Cobb or whatever the name might be, a Brandon Polinick? You have the guys that you know, hey, these guys are going to shoot it out. And it could go farther than the top two. But let's just talk about Kyle and Brandon Cobb because they are top. Does it surprise you that he's in this position right now? Not it doesn't at all. Me at all. No. Yeah. So Not. if we get to this point, we never have a surprise. This is a real deal kind of angler, I want to say. Second place finish in a classic. He's obviously top two right now in Angler of the Year. He's a, a bright star since he's been on the Elite Series. Uh, really not a surprise from his first year. And I will say this, you were one of the first ones to bring him to my attention. Like, pay attention to him. His first year or two, he's so consistent. So watching Kyle Welcher here, a little slower start to today than maybe he wanted or we expect. But not a surprise to see him in contention at this point in the season. It was more shocking to see the rough season he had last year yeah. than this result. Yeah. I mean, if you look at everything with the exception of last year, and he finished second at the Classic, but other than that highlight, it was a lot of lowlights, and he'll tell you that himself. But other than that, you watch every season, he's progressively got closer to that yeah. title, and he, he may win it eight days from now. <laughs> right. Uh, but it, if he doesn't, he's going to be knocking at that door yeah. again next year or in the next number of years. Totally agree. And we're not just saying this to try to get brownie points with Kyle Welcher, but it's the truth. And and he's going to, you know, if he doesn't win it this year, and he may very well, like you said, uh, he's going to win a classic or an angler year uh, one day, not not too far in the future. Brandon Cobb, same way. If Brandon doesn't win this year, yeah, he's going to win one of those titles. And, and to me as a fisherman, I always thought until you win, I mean, everybody wants to win tournaments. That's really like the first goal. Um, until you win a title, one of those two, Angler of the Year or the Classic, man, it's just it's just a year to year or, or uh, you have a bad year and you start thinking, is everybody second guessing what I've done? I hate how at the end of the season every year you look at those top two in our four box that are battling it out. And as you said, it's not just them. I mean, Jay Shakira keeps catching them. Yep. He may, if he makes up the same amount of points he made up last event, and he keeps doing that, he's he's, win. he'll win yep. Angler of the Year, yep. which is unbelievable. But I hate the fact that we always go down to the end. I mean, they've both had an Angler of the Year season. You look at how, yep. I mean, it is going to come down to one day, yep. one bite, one decision. Yep. I mean, they both had an Angler of the Year season. So I, I asked right Cobb earlier out. this week, I said, you know, 
what feels different this year? What what are you? And he's like, it's just, I know. When I make a decision, I don't think. He says, I, I know. He said, and it, everything has just continued to pan out. Experience, confidence, uh, two big factors there. But you, but you, you've won that title twice, Davey. What felt different to you those seasons versus ones where you qualified for the classic, had a good season, but yep. just it wasn't an angler of the just year season. Making good decisions and trusting the trusting those decisions. And here's the thing: I talked about it last night with a couple of the anglers. So once you do that, and once you feel that, and once you have it in your hand, excuse me, you should be able to do it every year, shouldn't you? But it's not that easy because it cannot be there, and you keep thinking, well, I know I need to trust my decision. You go make a decision, and, you, and you, you know, you're you 80th place in the tournament. You know, it's all of a sudden it's hard to trust. How do you capture that? Yeah, how do you capture that? But when it's happening, it's happening. And the other thing is you, you don't lose fish. So you ask yourself, so if you landed every fish that mattered this year, why can't you do that next year? But here's the thing that I that, that I look back on that and say, the, the angler year kind of years, the momentum, trusting, trusting your abilities, trusting your decisions, when I'd hook a fish, I would automatically think that fish is in my boat. Yeah, there's none of the, oh, don't get off. Yeah, and on years where you start lose a fish or two, the, the not-so-angler of the year years, not-so-making-the-Bassmaster Classic years, the first thing you think is, oh, please don't jump. It's going to jump off. Please don't do that. Don't get wrapped up. Don't, you know, you start thinking all those negative thoughts. So you just tell yourself, so now that you know that's the reason why do you do that. But it's not that easy. Look at just a few so, years ago, fighter got on a heater and... Man, one of the most dominant seasons we've ever seen. Oh, well done. He also said the the next year he felt an incredible amount of pressure. For the first time in years, he said, I felt a weight to deliver because he was angler of yeah. the year. I, I, I hadn't uh, heard him say that, but that is, that is a very good point there. I think a lot of that just comes f from his pedigree. You know, his bring his his dad. You know, competed in, in bass tur local bass tournaments. You've seen the jacket he yeah. wears at the classic and stuff like that. I mean, bass means so much, and to have that trophy that he's watched yeah. anglers like yourself and many others over the years hold in pictures and magazines. But to have that on your mantle, I think certain anglers like Seth take that weight very strongly yeah, yeah and that's a great thing yeah that's a great thing that, you that want. just tells you how much he loves the sport and you know a big reason why he's stayed with the bass brand when he had opportunity to do other things he is bred in him from his dad and and all his childhood coming up and seeing the a big hero of his i think his his ultimate fishing hero was denny brower yeah. he talks about that and you know, he he wanted to hold a trophy up like he saw Denny Brower hold up, and he did. And he did. And I'm sure he's saying, I'm not done either. It's won two Bassmaster events, but both of them postseason events. So he's very driven to hold an Elite Series title, a full field regular season Elite Series title. But, I mean, you look at his two wins. Not big. Hooked up live. Just thought I was in the weeds. I don't know if that's going to help. You look at his seasons. You look at his wins. I mean, twice he was on pace to be the first angler to crack 100 pounds of smallmouth bass. And twice... We said, er, it's a three-day event. Like, right. there, is there any part of you that thought a few years ago in St. Clair, he's not going to crack 100 if he had a fourth day? Right. No, he absolutely would have.
Well, and one thing you bet that he probably won't be part of this before this event is done, but atop the leaderboard, Alex Redwine, his second season on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And in tribute to that, he's got 22 pounds and two ounces. But right behind him in second place, Koya Fujita with 21 pounds, three ounces. And Davey Height, you're smiling from ear to ear because <laughs> you can see Koya. I can see Koya. <laughs> he is uh, taking a few waves. <laughs> we'll be Lots right back more. in a few more minutes. See if we can watch Koya again. Yeah! A glitter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. On location coverage, the eighth stop of 2023, the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain in beautiful Plattsburgh, New York. This the first of a four day event. Everybody fishes the first two days, then we cut the field down to 50 on semifinal Saturday, top 10 fishing championship Sunday. Doesn't look very rough where Seth Fighter is right no. now. No, <laughs> it, it, but it is. I just saw cameraman Wes Miller and he is wet from head to toe. But let's forget about his pain and jump into our power pole replay of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Power pole replay of the day. You got to think about Brian Schmidt, the defending champion here on Lake Champlain, Bassmaster Elite 2021. No surprise. That certain, certainly was not his first win here either. Brian Schmidt. Fishing a lot of isolated targets. He fishes a combination of some single boulders, but a lot of vegetation mixed in there. Isolated patches of vegetation. When you go up north and you think vegetation, it seems like you're, we're always talking about Brian Schmidt, and that's why he has to be our power pole replay today. We have a camera for him for a reason. Brian Schmidt, a great start this morning. Captured the lead right out of the gate with a camera in his boat and uh, We'll be seeing more of him this week. Brian Schmidt, power pole, replay of the day so far. Brian Schmidt came into this event in 10th place in our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard, but the guy on top of that leaderboard, Brandon Cobb, came into this event with a one-point lead in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points this moment ago. It might be a decent one, I can't tell. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's coming at me. I couldn't tell if he was any size or not. He'll at least get rid of that one if I can get him. I think he will, yeah. Yeah, he definitely will. Ugh. Feel his teeth on the line, I don't wanna to pull too hard. Come here. I ain't got nothing to grab. Gotcha. Pretty good one. Oh, right, Dave Mercer. That is a Look good at that belly. Big a lot bigger than a three pounder. Smallest fish on the fish lead. Two pound, 12 ounce. It's going to be a four pounder, don't you think? Yep, number one. Has to be. He's about a four pounder. It's bouncing around, but roughly a four pounder. Thank you. I, th I thought it was four, say, four. I should have just shut up and let yeah. him do the job. Maybe. Number yeah. one. <laughs> he said it was bouncing around. It probably was a four four. Yeah, we'll take that call all day. Hold him up. Absolutely. Bye bye. Go on. So last event in this now. event, we well, talked about four faces fishing. sonar quite a bit. <laughs> One bit of M info with Brandon, for Brandon Cobb. Yeah, 346 and a 354. 
<laughs> That's not bad having those as your smallest fish so far. But he had not caught any fish using forward-facing sonar midway through this season. So just when you think all the guys that catch them have to be catching all their fish looking at them with forward-facing sonar, and most have last tournament and a lot will this tournament, but that's the one. he's one of the anglers that has not used that very much this year thus far. Told well, me I also he, don't know the where first time went. he used it was St. Clair. And he said, I'm going to use it probably for the next three because right. I have to. There but he are. just chooses not to, I mean, the way he fishes, but he he, he also, I mean, I asked no, him straight up, so I said, fast. if there was a boat today, use it or not, he said, I would vote it off my boat. It's amazing there are a lot of the elite anglers that tell me that. Not all, all, but more than you would think if you don't interact with these guys like you and I do. Oh, he came off. Hooked I could never tell if it was a good one or not. Never got a good feel. Every cold on gets him a little closer a to babies too. Didn't feel a that bottle big, of Van Winkle 12. <laughs> what happened? Kind of got a weird hooks up, but I had a lot of slack. Another little known fact about Brandon Cobb. connoisseur of rare bourbons told me if he wins this he'll pick him a bottle of Van Winkle 12. So what's the average retail of Van Winkle 12? Oh he said, he said yeah well of course I asked you buy it all the time right. don't you? <laughs> no no but I asked him right I away. Him. He said it's about a $700 bottle he said but it depends where you go they can charge you a lot more because he says there's so few of them out there. But yeah, he said there, that, that's uh, nothing in the bourbon world. You I'm can basically spend a just lot. using a light but, green fish let's tackle. Let's listen to him talk about swim fishing. bait head, a 3 16th swim bait head. A heavier would be much easier, but I'm using a 3 16th with a little minnow style bait, kind of varying it on that. And uh, these fish aren't really on the bottom like normal smallmouth. They're, they're kind of running up on pods of bait, anywhere from 20 to a 50 foot of water. And I'm just chasing wait until I see a group run up and I'm trying to land on them. It's, the tricky part is like that was a group right there in this wind. If you don't land like almost above their heads, they will never come eat it. And it's hard, like I've had, you know, 50 opportunities a day and caught seven or eight fish. It's just hard to land on them. But I'm using the jiggle minnow. That's what I call it, the jiggle minnow. You just kind of throw it out there. A lot of them catch it. You don't even do anything, but throw it out and jiggle it back. Kind of like a crappy jig, really. Just like you fish for crappy. Perhaps I was catching a lot on the drop shot, but I was able to get them to go down to the bottom. And for some reason today, I can't get them to go to the bottom. They got to eat it up high. That was a good group there, and I don't know where they went. I lost that one. It's probably a good one. Most of the ones you catch that are really high in the water column are three and a half to four and a half pounds. They're all just big ones. It makes you want to sit in one place when you see them and keep looking, but they're kind of just swimming. Like they might be half a mile away by now. Schmidt, two anglers inside the top ten. The progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. The weights will be big today, but they would be a lot, lot bigger if it wasn't so windy, so you could chase these fish around a little more effectively. Because you can actually catch a bunch out of one school if you can keep, stay on them, but the problem is drifting so fast, by the time you catch one, they're pretty much gone. Heard a lot of anglers talk about their there. practice very similar to what Brandon Cobb is saying there. A lot of fish roaming over deeper water, looking forward, forward facing sonar. One person I did not hear talking about that was Brian Schmidt. And if you notice, he is fishing a bait on the bottom and he's he's fishing targets just like he always does here. Be interesting to see how it shakes out if obviously what Brian Schmidt has done here in the past is certainly successful, but a lot of these bigger smallmouth with with these anglers able to look for them with the forward facing sonar are being exposed this year more than I think any other year we've ever been here. 
I think you're also seeing the effect of forward-facing sonar in the way that mm. this tournament's got to play out. But if you look at our leaderboard, there's a lot of the traditional small mouse sticks that are not dominating like right. we've seen in the past. Right. We saw the same thing happen at Lake St. Clair. That has to be the effect of forward-facing sonar. Yeah. Yeah. So some of the real interesting, I'll try to make this quick, but it was really cool when I was out this morning on the water. I saw two boats at a distance. You I had no idea who they were. You throw at them when you first that, see them on the active target. You have to wait to figure out what As I got closer, I realized one of them was Clark Winlet was out offshore probably a half mile. And just between him and the shoreline, much closer, was Rick Clunt. Both of them been fishing here for decades. Watching them a little bit, Clark was doing something totally different than I've ever seen him do here, and I've fished around him a lot up here. He was forward-facing sonar, trolling motor, going fast, obviously looking for smallmouth suspended with the latest technology. Rick Clunt was where I would think I would have seen Rick Clunt in the 90s. <laughs> casting crankbait, spinnerbait kind of stuff up there in that shallower, uh, hard bottom rock cover. And it was like, wow. So you see both anglers with generations, you know, not generations, decades of fishing experience here, how there was two very, very different approaches. And just a few years ago, they would have both been doing almost identically the same thing. So... Who knows what will happen at weigh-in, but it was interesting to see one angler that has changed with what's kind of the happening thing now with the forward facing on lakes like this, and another not. Both with a ton of experience here. I didn't see either one of them catch a fish, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I stayed with him 15 or 20 minutes. On location coverage, and if we can feel anything the one thing you can feel is this wind and it, it Davey it feels like it's continuing to build here <laughs> um how rough of a ride is it going to be for some of these anglers coming back so hopefully uh I, this morning it didn't look like we had a single angler go to Brian Smith's hooked up I'll finish that here in a second let's see him catch a big large mile it's too much fun A nice large mouth. Not nice enough. Not nice enough to ride in his boat. It's too much fun. You ask about how rough is it out there. It's, it's really hard to describe. It's one of those things that yeah, it looks rough from here, standing on shore, but it's much rougher than it looks. It's just the way the the direction of the wind today, coming from the south, where we are, that's like the worst direction it could be for navigation on this lake. With relatively small boats, a 20 or 21 foot bass boat is small for Lake Champlain. As we look out at the weird, weird marina, there's boat stocks everywhere. I don't see a single one of them that are that is 21 feet or less. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> They're all like 30, no. 40 footers. Some of the dinghies. Of the yeah, well, true. Yeah. Yeah. The ones oh. tied on the back. <laughs> yeah, go for a quick jaunt into shore. <laughs> yes. Have a picnic. Always a picnic for Brian Schmidt here on this body of water. What an incredible track record he has. And off to a good start here again. The eighth stop of 2023, and they're all trying to chase down a prize that that guy right there, not those guys, but that last guy already had. Seth Fighter, progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year, your Yeti hot seat, is now being loaded by Alex Redwine. The weigh-in starts at 3 p.m. today. Davey Height, how many 20 bags do we see today? How many 20 sets? I'm going to say 12. That's 10 to guess. 12, but I'm going to go 12. I'm going to go higher. I'm going to go 15. Okay. I just... I mean to make the weigh-in a little more fun, and I enjoy fun weigh-ins, and I hope to see you guys there. 3 o'clock Eastern this afternoon, your Yeti Hot Seat. Yeah! A quarter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Bassmaster Live continuing on here. A couple of hours left before the weigh-in starts for our first flight anglers here. 
So there's plenty of time to get something done in the fishing. And uh, we have been watching the conditions change a little bit. We have seen uh, plenty of fish catches, some really good ones as well. Some of our anglers are uh, doing even better than they expected to do today. It's all sort of all sort of different from expectations. Great to have you with us. And for the next couple of hours, we're going to have a lot of fun. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon. Ronnie and Such are right here. Mark Zona as well. And, and Z, I ask you this at the top of the show. Everything's a little bit different this time around. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, you run down what's different for everyone who's just picking up with us. I, I honestly, I think this afternoon, I think this is going to be one of the most interesting weigh-ins that we've had on the Elite Series this year, just because I know a lot of anglers obviously have not reported their catches. And I think the main thing to really watch going into day number two is some of the smallmouth anglers, obviously, that caught them today. Are they off the beaten path or are they in a group of boats? And, and why I say I think today's weigh-in is going to be interesting did anybody crack the code of the large mouth on this body of water with the high water condition there you could not have better large mouth conditions on lake champlain than we have right now did anybody bust that puzzle open i think that's going to be the most interesting thing watching today i'm t tommy i'm not a big weigh-in watcher but i will tune in today I yeah, will. Abs absolutely that, that will be told at the weigh-in for sure ryan moore i know you have some definite thoughts about our angler of the year race yeah i think that you're seeing brandon cobb hold serve we were talking during our commercial break and, and our time our, our break away from bass live and said it's getting to the point in the season where Brandon Cobb may just, he just may not miss a top 20. He has been in the top 20 almost all season long, had one slip up, has done well in the first leg of the Northern Swing. He's doing well today. If he has one more good day at Lake Champlain and makes the top 50, it's not that the race is over, but we know it's going to be a day two, day three, day four fight at the St. Lawrence River for our final stop, which is always what we want. Mm -hmm. AOI coming down to the last few hours of the tournament season. Well, Such, as Ronnie and, and Z pointed out, we, we don't don't know the whole story yet because of people who are not reporting as per usual but what's catching your eye points wise what seems well, to be Well Brandon trending? Cobb with 11th place has really done his work he's instead of a one point lead over Welcher who still has only four fish he's got room is 43 points back and Joy Fuentes has jumped into fourth hold and serve on the uh, rookie of the year with Fujita there Shakur is in third place in AOI right now with his I think he's like 10th or 12th. Wow. All right. Well, let's take a look at our Bass Track leaderboard right now, which shows Alex Redwine of Ohio, the man on top. A slow <laughs> start to the season for Alex, for sure, but he's kind of reeled it back in, two cuts out of the last three events, and uh, the momentum continues for the young man, second-year guy from Ohio. Uh, Koya Fujita, obviously having a great day as well. Bryant Smith. Uh, Brian Smith, tr tremendous season for him so far and just keeps the momentum going himself. So Felix De Palma, De Palma making a big move up the uh, up the leaderboard. Yeah, I so told you, Tommy, yeah, ahead, we'd Brian. have way more than five pound, five 20 pound mats. I told you guys. Yeah, you didn't stop told No, that was exactly six not right what now you said. on there. How about our Yamaha uh, midday report ah. just to catch everyone up on the six anglers that we've been watching today? Z starting with Seth Fighter. Big expectations for him. No doubt about it. So many top finishes here for Seth Fighter, but it, boy, we got came into day number one, and Seth Fighter was very worried about what he got to see throughout practice, and that kind of showed this morning. Got the ball rolling a little bit, kind of mid-morning in an area that we have seen him before, kind of a little bit of a retread area of the Inland Sea. Got to see that in years past with Seth Fighter, but uh, still a little bit of work to do. We know he was not sandbagging because it was a very tough morning for an Absolutely angler slow of the year champion, him. Seth Fighter. Let's go over to there's Seth Fighter. One more shot from him, getting back to that boat dock where he got some damage done in years past there. So we will be keeping our eyes on Seth Fighter here. Hank Cherry. Hank Cherry came in here, the first man outside the classic cut points-wise when we started this tournament. And uh, Hank, having a good, not, as you say, Mark Zona, not a numbers guy today, but really good solid fish. No, and unlike Seth Fighter, concentrating on the New York side, fishing up north a little bit, had a big, big practice. But I heard Davey Height and Mercer talk about it. Hank Cherry, not a fan of rough water. He doesn't like mm. running in it, looking at it. Kind of really despises rough water, and I'm, I'm pretty much I think every human being on Earth does as well, Tommy. Uh, but really looking at his day so far, just very, very good quality. Has not been a numbers game, but uh, Hank Cherry, a lot of confidence coming in today. One backing it up right now. 
currently in 17th place. Yeah, that's good. And of course, Hank Cherry, as you said, a big expectation because of a good practice uh, uh, session here at this lake. Putting him in a good position to jump into that classic cut line, going to one event left and looking for revenge, obviously, next year at Grand Lake if he can hold on. Man of the hour, Brandon Cobb leading that progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points race. He got the job done at St. Clair uh, last time out, and looks like he's getting it done this time. He's in 11th place. Yeah, and here's the weird thing, really, with Brandon yeah, Cobb. He said it was, get ready for this, Tommy. It was the worst practice, he said, possibly really of his lifetime wow. coming into this tournament. <laughs> this really, really strong day. Using a lot of forward-facing sonar. I heard Ronnie, Ronnie made a comment. This is not uh -oh. his gig. Staring, staring at his depth finder. Well, I'm gonna tell you, it might not be his gig, but he's pretty good at it. He's good at it. Watching what he has done today. Most of his work done in the Inland Sea. Just a very, very solid stringer. Looks like Brandon Cobb yet has gotten the job done here on day number one. And we have seen Kyle Welcher have a rough, rough first day of this tournament so far. Solid day for Brandon Cobb. Yeah, the landscape has changed, and that's a progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race right now. Brian Schmidt, a big, big favorite coming in here, one of the big favorites at, at any rate. And he started out like a guy who was intent on winning this thing today. I keep him, but I don't know. No, really looking at what Brian Schmidt did today, it, he has a game plan for every single day of this tournament. I asked him, I said, are you on largemouth? He said, I absolutely am on largemouth, but I'm going to try as hard as I can to not go to them days one and days two. Save them for semifinal Saturday, championship Sunday possibly. And he said, look, man, if I get 18 to 20 pounds of smallmouth, I am ahead of schedule for this tournament. Well, he pretty much did that in the first 90 minutes of competition this morning. Yes, yeah, it's at 8.14 right now, unofficially. So, Brian Schmidt, uh, his game plan, as you say, Mark Zona, is working out just perfectly. Has not had to mess with the large mouth. Looking good for the remainder of this tournament, but we shall see take you out on the lake here. Yeah, looking at that map right there, it almost looked like Hank Cherry already checked in with some of this <laughs> yeah. rough water we have out there. Could be. Gonna get over to Brandon Cobb right now, Bassmaster. How big are you? I don't know if he's gonna help. He's very similar. Kinda depends on how fat he is. I don't think he's gonna help. Nah, nah, he's a little bitty. I thought he was like a three something. There's three of them. One of them looked real big, but it could have been two beside each other. I think that's like a three even. Be sure, but. I'm gonna make sure that one I hook funny. That's that bigger one. Yeah, he's fine. Oh, my scale's cut off. Why would you not? All right, this is not worth it at this point. Yep. He's actually bigger than I thought he was. 320. You got a 346 in there? 346 and a 35. Let's see. My smallest ones are 346, 354, 383. But it's bouncing around so much that could be like a 33, a 34, and a 36. So like just depending, you know, when I locked it. Could be a, the other way too, though. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's all about when I hit that lock button. Let's take it out from Brandon Cobb, obviously doing very well today, doing a good job. Over to Seth Fighter, slow start to his day, but uh, man, oh man, he is, uh, he's turned it around. Still, he's got, he's got work to do, but man, good job.
kind of looking at our unofficial leaderboard if we were to talk about where our cameras are going to be tomorrow i think the one common theme is we're going to spend a lot of time in the inland sea tomorrow it appears that was a big question that i called and talked to a couple anglers z and asked him about was based on craig lamb's aerial gallery and some of those different water conditions. The Inland Sea looked nasty with no wind. It was green and, and I was asking some of the guys how it affected the water clarity, if it, if it made the fish act different than normal. And a lot of them said it, it more so made the bait act different, not the fish, but where bait was present, it was just a little different than what they expected or what, they, what they've seen in past years, just based on how strong the pollen and algae was in that, in that general region, because it was so protected it in practice. Uh, Brian Schmidt was actually the one that, that brought exactly that up. He said it had more of a, a tea. It had more of a tannic color in the Inland Sea than usual. Usually it's kind of a dark, you know, it's just a, it's clear, but it's a, it's a being a dark bottom. It looks like it's, you know, not very clear, but he said it, it definitely had more of a, a, a tannic color this time around compared to years past. Not browner browner not browner no, no. Not browner. Okay. Yeah. that was in other area i guess <laughs> i think jerry has sought a little bit of refuge there from the, from the waves got the break wall there yeah it is definitely going to be a it's going to be a bumpy ride in for a lot of anglers this afternoon and we heard Dave and Davey talking about it's, it's the pictures are not doing justice to how how much it's revving oh, yeah. up out there that wind. It could be I blowing. The, oh, I, go ahead, Z. I think the main thing to really kind of watch for tomorrow morning is we're supposed to have a, a, a blow all night long out of the south, and and we opened up with the show. That is the that is not a good direction mm. for this lake laying north and south is. It, it is going to be ripping tomorrow morning. I, and really, I think the big obvious story right now is Kyle Welcher sitting on four bass. That is, you know, very surprising because he sounded like he, he was really on them and with the conditions the rest of today with him fishing offshore and chasing a lot of the pelagic smallmouth in this lake. This is, mm. this is not prime forward facing sonar conditions at all now. He had a very similar start at St. Clair, was able to salvage it in the afternoon or around this time of day. Yeah. But like you said, with that weather coming in, it's not going to be nearly as easy yeah, uh, as it was to salvage really day one. You know that? You know what was? So I'm about to do something really dumb. If you're into that kind of stuff. You're going to make a good run to fish something like this. It's probably going to have three footers on it. There's a slight chance it's protected. I'll drive nice. All right. One of the really interesting stories we didn't talk about much at, at St. Clair was with Kyle Welcher. He was frighteningly close to the area where Safuentes won that tournament. Like he was very, very close to where that tournament got won. Hmm. There's a lot more people in it. Little well, set fighter, let me make a little bit of a move there. One he deems is possibly risky. <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll see how that works Give out. Give take a few words. <laughs> Still got Alex Redwine on top there, trying to turn his season around, doing a good job of it out there on day number one. Fujita Bryant-Smith from out there 
Folsom Lake and Sacramento River Delta doing very well on Lake Champlain. He also did great in South Carolina this year, so go figure. Some good, good action out there. We'll be right back. Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Dakota Lithium. Every single tournament, I try to do the best that I possibly can. You know, I try to win every single one. We're not gonna do anything super risky. A lot of these fish are in big wolf packs, chasing bait. I'm talking about giant schools. Literally three minutes and you catch as many as you can until, you know, you lose them and then you try to find them again. So we're gonna kind of have the same game plan that I'll always have and just try to catch as much weight as we can every single day. Kyle Welcher coming into this tournament. Uh, second place by a point. Mr. Angler of the Year, Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. Of course, there's two, nothing's been decided yet. Two days of fishing before we make the cut. Uh, his uh, job is to make that cut tomorrow. 16 and a half pounds to make the cut the last time we were here in 2021. 16 and a half pounds a day. 33, 33 plus to make the cut. We'll see how that pans out this year as we get back on the water here with about an hour and a half left fishing time. For First flighters. Yeah, and it really has been a surprisingly slow day for Kyle Welcher. He's been fueling the fun pretty much all season long on the Elite Series. And boy, watching today compared to his practice, uh, you know, he was on some really, really big schools from call it 30 feet of water all the way out to 100 feet of water suspended down really 15 to 20 feet. But his main concern, which, it, you know, <laughs> you're looking for a, a group of fish that are not relating to anything except yeah. bait. And, and if you don't flash that spotlight in the in the right area, and it kind of seems that that was the case today, at least so far for Kyle Welcher. Justin Atkins just caught a four and a quarter to become our seventh angler over that. 20 pounds today. To where we were all morning. Just grinding away for a four pounder because I just don't know, like if dude, if I run down to this bottom end, it'll be calm, but coming back, right. it going with them waves, we're going to just spear them nonstop. I know we are. That's not a fun thing to think about. <laughs> so we got, it's 130. I mean, we're gonna get wet. I wanna heard Dave and Davey talk about it. This you you, you truly can't give enough credit. They the <laughs> service crews that come to all of these tournaments, boy, they they're spot on every day, but boy, they are going to have their hands full today and tomorrow. Yeah. Really? We're gonna go back to where we started. A new Phoenix Boats big bass leader, Ed Lawford with a 5-3. <coughs> he's got 18 pounds total and he's got a 110 in his five fish limit. He's got a 5-3 and a 4-10 as well. I, I really think that, I think Hank has made his way back to, I think that is right at Plattsburgh.
Move for a ride, eh? That wind is kicking it. I made a move up here further north just to try something new. Matt Robertson with a 4.6. He's up to 19.10, just jumped into top 10 and 8th. Knocking out Jay Shakurit. Go bounce around some more. Just don't have the bait up here. That's that's weird. There's a huge population of fish that live in this area of the lake. But man. The bait's not up here, and the bite's tough. Area Keith's talking about is that massive, massive flat up near Rouse's Point. Usually you see 20 to 30 competitors, and at most today, Tommy, we've only seen probably a half dozen boats, probably less boats up there today than we have ever seen in tournaments we've covered on Lake Champlain. Action from earlier today with Keith Combs. When the fishing was a tad easier to manage. And you kind of kind of heard him lay it out right there. One of the reasons that massive flat up there Gosh, it's been so productive in years past, and, and it's productive, you know, it's an all summer long deal. Just a lack of bait. Most of his work this morning done with a jerk bait. Pretty juicy stuff right there, man. That's a rock with some of that grass mixed in there. Here's where I caught a three and a half. Caught several more fish here in practice.
you're just tuning in, we've, uh, of course, given you updates and Bass Track estimated leaderboards there. It will all be official at the weigh-in. A lot of anglers do not have marshals, and thus not get to report as usual, so the weigh-ins be extra important to get in the full story today, and that's coming up at 3 Eastern time. Promptly at 3 Eastern, they'll start the weigh-in. If you're watching on the Bassmaster Live on the Bass Track tab of the website, you'll click over to the leaderboard tab or the weigh-in tab and be able to see a new video player with the weigh-in and the leaderboard will start to populate there once weigh-in begins. Joey Safuentes made a a lot of moves here in the last two hours. He had kind of a slow morning. It's hard for Joey to shine more than he did at St. Clair last event, Z, but this is where I, I had him circled more on the map for the Northern Swing, less than St. Clair with Champlain and St. Lawrence. He's had quite a right. few great finishes up here in, in really strong tournament fields of, of locals and, and touring pros in this neck of the woods, but he can't really get better than first, so I guess we'll see if he does it again. Yeah, a couple four well, pound a class fish in the last hour, give him 1810. 13th place. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing that he has won two tournaments this year and, and, and still is not running away with Rookie of the Year. That is unbelievable. Absolutely. Fajita's gaining on him in this event so What's far. Fajita? Fajita has a second, a third, a sixth. Wow. The only thing seventh holding at Fajita, Clair. The, or a seventh, and yeah. the only thing holding him back is a hundredth at Santee Cooper for Fajita. Speaking of curiosity, Ronnie, have you yeah, yeah, go ahead, see. Have you decided, Ronnie, or is it you or Such that's going to call Vegeta tonight to really trench in on, on some of those lures? I gave way to Such. I had I had staked. Okay. I, you know, I had I had said that I had given it the college try. You know. And what happened? Yeah, listen, I, I got stone. I can't stress. Oh, I can't stress. I really can't stress how how bad. It went between Fujita and myself behind the stage. He seems very like, nice. So, really like, how bad? bad. Though? He's well. He's very nice. It seems. So he's very look. nice, but it was what was. This is actually true. <laughs> I walked away and I looked at Taku, and I I can't use my exact words, but I said I really did not get anything from Koya right there. <laughs> Taku enjoyed that. Now you'll wear him down. You'll chip away at it. Anyway, speaking of curiosities, right, on the other side of that, where would Cobb, if he were to win AOY, with a 91st place on his card, where would that put him as far as the lowest finisher, the lowest finish? It was a prerequisite in a season for a few to win years. the AOY. If for a few years, there was a prerequisite. Aaron getting yeah, yeah, in the 90s, and 100th for yeah, Pollinick, yeah. but yeah. 105th like, for Pollinick. Yeah. It's only probably three or four anglers who have been able to recover from, normally that's their starting finish. Like right, they start yeah. the season with that. Yeah, his yeah. was his was much later. Way on but down, yeah. Right, yeah. Not not frequently can you do that. No, no. Very hard. Let's take a look at the leaderboard, unofficial as we say. Uh, much, much left to report on that before it's a complete picture, but Alex Redwine hanging in there on top unofficially. Over 22 pounds. How about that? Justin Atkins now has jumped in between him and uh, Koya Fujita. Bryant Smith, Austin Felix, Greg De Palma up in this part of the country, doing very well today. Gary Klaus making a big move today as well. We'll be back. Yes! Yeah. No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Thanks for being with us today, Bassmaster Live, our live coverage of this 
eighth event of the year for the Bass Master Elite Series on legendary Lake Champlain. So much American history uh, has taken place on this lake. A lot of history from the from the Revolutionary War, and among the 300 or so big wrecks on the floor yeah. of this are are many ships from the Revolutionary War. It was controlling this lake was a big part of uh, of uh, winning or losing in the in the case of the British that I think, conflict. I think or David Ty Mullins. Yeah. Uh, David Mullins posted a, a photo of a boat that was about big. 70 to 80 feet in length that he saw on the bottom of the yeah. bottom of the lake. There's supposedly 300 plus of that size out here. They have dive maps to go to them, people. Of, uh, yeah. Scuba diving. Small mouth, I don't know, around 19 pounds or so, but got two, like three, a 340 and a 350 something that would be nice to call, but got a little cloudy. I'm not seeing near as many now. We're a decent little ways from the ramp. I got one little largemouth spot I might go hit on the way back because I don't know how good it is and shook off a couple. Might go see, make sure it's not, I'm not missing out on something. Might catch a great big one too. We, we're not far from about what we can do small mouthing. Kind of hard to call once you get three and a half. Is that a word, Z, small mouthing? It is actually Such, but I, I something know. that he actually but just hit it on right there. It since that those clouds have come in, the fishing has really gotten slow. I mean, it yeah. was great this morning when we had sunny conditions. I, mean, I think I made the comment around ten o'clock. You couldn't ask for better conditions. We had about a ten mile an hour wind, really high skies, and. The more that this front has pushed in, especially with that cloud cover, the, right around the Dave and Davy show, the smallmouth fishing has gone very, very slow. Well, all accolades to Brandon Cobb on a terrific season so far this year. We say he's only missed one cut this year and it was a disaster. But other than that, wow. I mean, if you count the five top tens, if you count the classic, starting out here with a great effort on Okeechobee. Really kind of got to talk to Brandon quite a bit, fished with him on Lake Hartwell at the start of the season. And the injury, well, you know, the year's going right when you're catching doubles right here. And one of them, I'm not talking about a boat of stud. Yeah is the biggest worry that Brandon Cobbs had is he said, I, I always get nervous coming up north, really holding his own a couple weeks ago, but uh, been one of those unbelievable years. Carolina Angler. It was the rookie of the year when he came out, of course, winning two tournaments, of course, that year on Hartwell and Lake Fork and Catching just 114 pounds on Lake Fork. That was pretty impressive for, for a first year man or anyone. Yeah, we really thought uh, Cobb's 812 at Okeechobee would hold out for the big bass of the year until Christie cut that 9 4 at Lay Lake. That's 10,000. He was third at Okeechobee, that's right. Yeah. 20. <laughs> Brandon Cobb has done a lot. If you really kind of, it's one of those weird like Polinick seasons where it's, it, that we've covered Brandon, it seems like every single day of the season. It feels like we have covered Cobb every single day this year. Yeah. Right. And w what's really strange is it, it's one of those seasons where he's done a lot with a little because there has been, there have been multiple times that, you know, we'll talk to the English before the tournament begins. And there's been multiple tournaments. He's like, ah, I'm just not. But Lay Lake was one of those tournaments where he, even watching him fish in that tournament, he just did a lot with a little throughout the event. And ever since he came out, I mean, he is. I would, I would say he's one of the top six for consistency in the last four years. Oh, he's always yeah. yeah. Coming from coming from the FLW tour yeah. out of college, you know, he was he was just. A guy who's always going to make a check, always going to do real solid. Did have his weaknesses, but me, made up for him like early in the year. Groups to do all day is stay with me. I haven't been able to get him to. Guys, he ate it a little far. He's a little bitty guy.
Come here. Don't flip my worm off. First group I've been able to stay on though. They are now gone. Bassmaster Live fans, Tommy, we did get some bad news for our yeah. Seth Fighter fans. Uh, we got some real bad news. Um, you're not going to see much more of him today. We understand we got a text that he speared a wave and totally flooded the camera. So he is down. Cameraman well, he warned us. He warned us that... Yeah. Something could happen. And it wasn't risky. He, he something didn't say just risky. Happened. He said stupid. <laughs> yeah. He said stupid. It's Cameraman it's, it's, asked, well, is it going to be yeah. iffy? Well, it's going to turn out to be a very expensive <laughs> decision right there. As the bass track has not lit up. Last couple of decent fish, Justin Atkins, no. the 412 to get over 21. And Jay Shakurit caught a four and a quarter. And he's just three ounces shy of 20 pounds in eighth place. I would have liked to heard some of the verbiage when he speared that wave. <laughs> Wish we were alive right at that <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> bud. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it wasn't quite <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> They usually have wet bags they put their cameras in on a, on a run, don't well, they? Well, we're not placing well, blame here, Z. Hey, uh, I'm not soon, placing we're not blame. blame. No, he's not. Dang, dude. <laughs> Must have been a bunch of them together. Looked like a bigger one. Doesn't look like that one will help Ryan Schmidt. Have a little trouble with his mic in these conditions right here. Very important rest of the day for your angler on the right, right there, Kyle Welcher. I think that's a good one. Well, this one's this is in, is important if it measures for sure. And it will. He's skinny. <coughs> it's 
super skinny. Here, wait, it might have got him back in the top 50 yet. He was a two and a quarter. He was a two and a half, actually. That would have done it. Put him just around 13 pounds or so, still not. No, Anywhere not. that's going to be close to the cut line, most no. likely, with, with half our field without marshals and what this lake has always produced at okay. 17 pounds for the cut line. He's got four fish under three pounds, so 53rd right now. Cameramen are coming up the water and putting in uh, photo galleries just so we know that guys like Cooper Glant and Chris Johnson do have fish because the photo galleries have them catching fish. But their bass track is down. As you say, Mark Zona gotten slower when those weather conditions change. The smallmouth fishing is slower right now. We have seen a couple, little bit of action, though. Maybe an upgrade for Kyle Welcher. Well, definitely an upgrade for Kyle Welcher. Maybe for Schmidt. But Alex Redwine remains on top. Justin Atkins having his best tournament so our best tournament day so far this year. Absolutely, Toya Fujita, Bryant Smith in our top four. We'll be right back.
Yeah! A glitter! No way! You're watching live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain from Plattsburgh, New York. Welcome back to Bassmaster Live here at the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain. Day one coverage here. 102 anglers are full field fishing today. Missing a few anglers, but nonetheless, nonetheless, wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studios because we have the copy. We've been talking about it the last few Elite Series events. The 500th issue of Bassmaster Magazine here at the Dakota Lithium Screen of Knowledge. Wonderful magazine, fantastic to see the publication make it this far. We talked about it, how many fans, how many members, how many issues, not many people and publications can say they've made it this far. Some fantastic storytelling in here. Bob Cobb has a different story in here as well about uh, I guess the origins and the beginnings of this publication, but fantastic to see Bassmaster Mag Magazine make it 500 episodes. Uh, it'll be on your mailbox maybe? in the next week or two, September, October edition. Be on the lookout for that. You've got some awesome magazine, uh, I guess, covers from the years in that 500 issue logo at the front. So fantastic to see James Hall uh, and the whole crew there, Bassmaster in Birmingham. Absolutely. I mean, surviving in the magazine industry for that long is just unheard of anymore. It's, it's a because of the quality and because they never veered from the original intent, which is to teach people how to become better anglers. You know, the cool. story inside about Bob Cobb, the big pickle box full of submissions yep. from, from anglers from all over the country. And he took that and got that stuff into the magazine, all bent on getting wow. people better educated. And that's, that's why it's worked. It's, it's so unique. And we ran. <coughs> Up to our fish, we caught them. It a little, took a little longer than <coughs> had hoped. Um, caught five decent ones, no giants. <coughs> uh, decided to come back. We came back a little after 11, <coughs> and uh, I wanted to come back faster than that, but I tried to get greedy and catch one more, and I should have just, I asked for five, and I should have just left with the five. But we got back. It took us like a 14 minute run up there this morning, 15 minute run. And it took us an hour and three minutes, hour and seven minutes to get back. It's, it's pretty wow. rough out there. I mean, it, we didn't spear a wave, knock on wood. I won't have to do one tomorrow if we go fishing, but um, just don't, you, nobody makes a bass boat for these conditions. It's just, it's crazy out there. I think, I'm pretty sure we saw some six footers. <laughs> I know this, uh, we hit something hard. <laughs> And uh, we stood this thing up about mm, for 10 miles straight up and down, but it got us here. Uh, that's one reason why I got a mercury on the back. You know, everybody's got their preference, but mercury's never let me down. So gonna weigh them in early because I beat them up pretty bad, bring them up here, but I, they're still okay. And we'll get them in the release tank and some oxygen and get them back in the water and try to formulate a game plan for tomorrow. Well. There you go, right there. It took 14 minutes to get there this morning and an hour and 14 to get back. Z, that was one wow. of your favorite questions. I remind, remember you asking guys, did you hit it hard? He said he hit something hard. It, uh, no doubt about it, Zooch. Well, he did good. The time he had to spend out there, 22nd Absolutely. place. Yeah, unofficially. Won't be quite that high when all said and done, but still, I mean, that's getting in good shape to make the cut. That's the that's the imperative today. And the Man, real, like real bad. I never shaved, I forgot. Real bad situation is those 30 mile cuts are like supposed to beard. be between four and 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. So that, oh. that is gonna be the peak of the wind and there's going to be some residual for several hours coming up yeah, this lake. I guess you're right. It's just a fraction of the size of a place like Ontario, but where they get they get Great Lakes style. Yes, bad absolutely. weather here. For absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Such said I have hit some hard ones on this lake before. <laughs> I think the roughest boat ride I ever took was with Jerry McInnes. This is back pre-Mark Zona. This is pre-Elite Series wow. days. I think it was maybe pre-Passmaster days. Uh, a fellow was going to take us out to take a look at Davy Height actually fishing. 
out there, and he had one of the shortest bass boats I've ever seen. And, awesome. And, and he wanted to lean on it. I was, I was looking for a crutch when I got out of that, that boat when we got back. Tommy, do you remember the nut bag? Hold on. It was at which one? It was at it exactly. We. <laughs> This is such a good, it was at Oneida. You and I jumped in his boat and he let her rip and he speared one in the first 200 yeah. yards. And he said, I love spearing him. I said, hey, dude, get out of the driver's seat. Yes, you actually. You are done. For you did. You, you fired him right there on the spot. We, we were just off the beach yes. there. We're just yes. off the beach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. He, he made the comment. I love spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's. Uh, oh, I will never forget that. Oh, no way. No, me neither. Yeah, he was relieved of his duty. Yes, he was. He was. He was instantly taken out of the seat. Oh. like the smallmouth light has been turned off since noon. Weird, there's more bait up here shallower, but I don't see as many fish or any fish. Something cool would happen. It's about all we're gonna do here, though. I'm probably, I'm in 22 now. When we get to like 18, I'm gonna run back across. So, however far that is, I'm not sure, but I got at least make sure there's not big largemouth in there. That'll give us enough time to effectively do it. the Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard right now as it stands. I assume this is real time and up to date for Amy Cobb, yeah. Oh yeah. On top, Kyle Welch, Tyler Rivette, John Cox and Drew Cook, Joey Cifuentes. Put himself kinda, right back Kind of looks like that's going to get shaken up, Tommy. Yeah, I, That's going to so. really get yeah. shaken up today. Yeah, absolutely. That may not be completely up to date. Well, of course, it's not, not completely up to date because of the things we don't know at this point, but we remind you. The weigh-in coming up at 3 Eastern, so keep that in mind. We got more fishing though when we get back. One of the most amazing things about this classic is the fishing freaks that showed up here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Look at that crowd. 
It is for the fans. Blast off, there's all the media, the fans, family, you're in that moment. A new all-time attendance record for the Bassmaster Classic this week in Knoxville, Tennessee. I think everybody that shows up to the Classic wants to feel a little bit of what we are feeling. When they open that door and pull you into that Coliseum, the adrenaline rush of that, it's insane. This is the giant bass! All the records set here in Knoxville in 2019 have been reset here again. Six pounds, 13 ounces! Gussie gets it done! And oh, Canada, you have a Bassmaster Classic Champion! Back out to Kyle Welcher. Currently 55th place. He started second place by a point, Bassmaster Angler of the Year. So he's uh, got a lot of work to do over the remainder of today and tomorrow. The main thing is make that cut tomorrow. Does have five fish now, just recently. He yep. fifth fish in the boat. Conditions have really changed. If you look at the your weather stats, the uh, atmospheric pressure just kind of fell off a cliff about 11 o'clock today. And it's still on the way down. Yeah, and you always, every single smallmouth tournament we have, we always talk about the how critical it is to have sun. Boy, it has been a. Oh, yep. we go. Well, it's sunny where Brandon comes yeah, every. Yeah. Oh, no. It's too close to the boat. It's like a four pounder. Mm. That was that one more I needed. Dang. Hooked him so close to the boat I couldn't do anything. Man. He wasn't he wasn't like much bigger than I got, but it was a four pounder. I hooked him like under the motor. He was so close I didn't have any time to let him do anything, you know? Well dang. Oh well. At least it wasn't like a five something. It was it was about a three eighty to a four to ten probably. <laughs> Would have added a half pound. Well, we have talked about how critical it is to catch a four pounder on this lake especially. Mm-hmm. Well, he did get it right at the boat, didn't he? Absolutely. Man. Just finally got another, one more good bite, like a four pounder, and jumped him off. He ate it like six foot from me, and I couldn't do anything with him. Right there. Gonna take us about 25 or 25 minutes to get across there. <laughs> There's a handful of boats already far. back near Plattsburgh. And this is not gonna be the rough side either. You heard Brandon Cobb make the comment right there. This is not going to be a rough, the rough side. And I know a lot of our friends that are watching this on Bassmaster Live that fish Lake Champlain. I know this is going to sound crazy, Tommy, but there the are certain air like you could be in the inland sea and there's, you know, there might be 
one to three foot waves and then you come through the gut and all of a sudden you are in the teeth of it. Yeah. It's it's very weird how whether how the, the how the wind comes through the mountains here. There there are certain areas that stay a lot calmer and there are certain areas that stay a lot rougher as you kind of wind through Lake Champlain. That's it, it is the one thing I really learned there back, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Right on the there are certain right places there. that stay a lot calmer than other areas of Champlain, especially on that north end. How about a Peter Buck big fish alert? Okay. Oh yeah. Jay Shakur it. Woof Here we go. Found even. Oh. Second biggest of the day. He's up to third place with 21.6. Mm -hmm. Third place in AOY right now. Started the day tied with Cifuentes for six and seven, 516 points. Third place in AOY right now. That's wow. That's a development. Scary. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> scary for for a couple of guys we're looking at right now. Well, for he sure. gains. I think he was 57 behind uh, Cobb to start the day. He's still going to be 44 back or so. We got a couple guys who are off Bass Track all day. Just popped in with decent bags. Bill Lowen, 18 and a half. Scott Martin. I needs saw to both catch of those him. guys in the top top 20 now, right? Yeah, 18th, 18, eight, more than 18 pounds for Martin too. Scott Martin, I think, has a pretty decent record here. Is that, is that right? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Also in the top 20, Scott Canterbury now. And Drew Benton. Martin came in 61st in AOI. He needs to have a pretty good north swing here to get classic. Right now, without all the other anglers, even on Bass Track, he's 42nd. So make him mm. part of it here and go to St. Lawrence and do well there. System offshore down there on Cape Cod. That area just pumping this wind in here. It is surprisingly sunny on that. Yeah. New York side right now. I wish I, I did. I took my Thunder Cricket out of the boat. That would be something else I could run through there. I'll have it for tomorrow, but. I really didn't think that, you know, when I got those bites right here on this one specific spot in practice, I I really didn't think it would produce again, you know, and then it's gave, we've had two good bites in here. Well, a lot of wind. It's got all these guys thinking about uh, if they haven't made it back yet or have started along that way, how long it's going to take them to get back. It's uh, definitely going to take. Travel is tougher than when they started this morning. We'll just put it that way. Alex Redwine on top. Justin Atkins having a good tournament here so far on this day. And Jay Securit, you just heard that. A five pounder puts him all, all the way up into third place. Jay Securit, he caught 100 pounds plus at smallmouth last year to win the last tournament of the year. So we got some more developments happening out there and we'll be right back.
Live coverage of the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite at Lake Champlain is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. Progressive Insurance. And by Rapala. Uh oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Look out now. I'm yeah. talking about bowed up all morning long, Tommy Sanders. Brian Schmidt, so much history here on Lake Champlain. He backed it up this morning, said he had to do a lot of hunting for these 25 to 35 feet of water pods, a small mouth. Well, he didn't have to hunt very often long this morning. He landed on a load of them. And the scary thing is, Brian Schmidt made the comment, if I can just leave my large mouth alone, the first and second day of this tournament, I'm gonna be a factor going into the weekend. Well, he's been able to do that here on day number one. Absolutely knocked their lights out for the first two and a half hours of Bassmaster Live this morning. Longest power pole replay of the day in the history of the power pole replay of the day. But you are it again, Brian Schmidt. Power pole replay of the day, day number one. Bode up. Yes. Our coverage today on Bassmaster Live has been like two tournaments. The one that lasted until really 11 o'clock, which was <laughs> fantastic. And then after 11 o'clock, which has been very, very different. And Tommy, one thing that I can say for sure now, I've been watching our map in the Inland Sea of all of our anglers. That area that I told you I've got a little history fishing here, taping mm -hmm. shows, tournaments, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be a lot of boats in that area tomorrow. I think I could I could really kind of walk through every single rock that they'll be casting <laughs> at tomorrow. So we'll kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit tomorrow afternoon. It's kind of a 26 to 36 foot deep flat. Okay. That a lot of current goes through and it it also it, it is very they bite when it's rough there. So if if we are fishing tomorrow morning, look for uh, that certain area of the Inland Sea to play yet again tomorrow morning, Bassmaster Live All television right. show. Very good. Very good. Got some preseason football cranking off tonight. Oh, have we? We got some preseason? Oh, yeah. It's going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm big into the preseason. One, you told me one game yeah. that you've watched multiple times already. Well, Justin Fields made three passes last week and had 417 yards on those three passes. <laughs> no, uh, I rewatched it. I rewatched the game three times last week, and I'm not sure. I'm actually being very serious. You, you are, man. Issues. <laughs> well, yeah, you, <laughs> Issues. You, I'm not saying you need help. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm, I'm saying that's that's remarkable. Well, it's something else. Yep. I would say a, a lot of our anglers will probably start making their way in because crossing from the gut, which divides the New York side to the Inland Sea, that is going to be pretty, pretty sporty coming in to Plattsburgh this afternoon. I just noticed Red Wine made it to the breakers there. He's close. He's, he's smart to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Brian Schmidt, I don't, I mean, he's, he's out of the top 10, but just barely now. And you explain what the deal is. He, he hasn't, his last keeper was four hours ago. He's exactly. he got his job done. He got the work done early. And uh, with his large mouth still in pocket, he's, man, mm -hmm. sitting pretty good. And he said he checked those large mouths. He's got about 10 different large mouth spots that he's going to utilize. Easy now, come on. He's, he's going to well, utilize throughout Saturday and Sunday, but he said two of them he felt were really good. And we'll have our full field fishing again tomorrow. 102 anglers. We are missing one Bernie Schultz this week and will be next week as well. He had, had an injury. Uh, it's gonna take some time to heal. He'll be back, bounced to be back yeah. next year. I really, 
I think the angler I did a I think it was on Mercer's podcast angler to really kind of keep your eye on I, and this is being obvious but but before the St. Clair tournament I said you better watch Jay Shakur hanging around in the top 10 in the angler of the year with the lakes that we were going to and he's not out of this yet oh boy you watched him in action at the end of last year you know he's a, yes what he's capable of and it's it's formidable. <laughs> Z, last two times here, day one, we had a full limit, except 2021, one guy missed getting the limit, but it seemed like there were more halves I mean, down in 80th place was 14 pounds, and this, this year doesn't seem like the guys who are lower have that kind of weight yet. And with, uh, yeah, with Kyle Welcher now headed in, everyone is headed in, so uh, <laughs> we do not have any cameras left on the water there. We, we just got very, very little time left. We have to, the plan has always been to conclude at 145 Central, or 245 Eastern time today, so that they can get on track, on time, start for the weigh-in, because further entertainment is planned at the site. So uh, that was the case, I think, <laughs> last week, too. So. Uh, so it's it's just us, unfortunately, till the end. But Z, talk about what you saw today, and and uh, I mean, everyone knows that tomorrow is going to be rough, a rough start to the day. How do you get your mind ready to go out and fish on a day like that, a morning like that, anyway? Hey, this is this is Lake Champlain, and and these guys had the benefit of really, really obviously calm water throughout practice. But this is what we're seeing today. Is it's really the kind of the the usual Lake Champlain. I think the thing, obviously, the one thing we talked about. I think it would just be cool if to see if somebody cracked the code on the largemouth at the weigh-in today. But the the schools, the schools on Lake Champlain, this time of year, Tommy, they're big. the The smallmouth schools are, you know, the the fish are grouped up. They're obviously past post spawn, which is generally post spawn here is the mid to end of july which is when we've had you know we've had bassmaster elite series events but this time of year when you start to approach the end of august the schools are big they tend to reload and i think the one thing for our bassmaster live viewers and, and the folks that fish this lake know this is it, 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 a lot of the areas that are getting pressure they're known areas in the inland sea it's the the, the guys that kind of got off the beaten path in the inland sea and we're left alone. One of those anglers that I watched all day that was off to himself is a guy like Austin Felix that is just good at fishing this style. I really look at that one area that I'm talking about in the Inland Sea, and we'll break it down a lot more tomorrow. Those fish will reload, but those guys will absolutely cannibalize each other tomorrow going into Saturday. So, and like you said, our cameras are down right now. A lot of guys making that long run back and Seth has destroyed a camera spearing a wave today. So I'm just saying words at this point, Tommy. That's all I'm doing. I'm just saying words. Okay. Well, there you go. Well, let's have some pictures to go along with it. We see now anglers <laughs> who have made it to that. I want to ask you one question before we have time. How in 10 years, people, a lot of our fans have been following action on this lake for 20 years. But in 10 years, how has the, the forage changed? How has the, the nature of the bait, what it is and how it's distributed changed? Uh, you know, I, I, obviously, the the presence of having gobies in this lake has changed the complete. But look, it's still, it's not like you see a lot of twenty five to thirty pound smallmouth stringers in there. It's it. I think the most amazing thing that, and I, it, it's funny, I was talking with Schmidt about this yesterday. That inland sea for the last thirty years, just this time of year, has better quality fish than throughout the rest of the season in that northern region of the lake. Look, they're still perch eaters. They're still bait fish eaters. They're very pelagic. But obviously, the presence of goby have made smallmouth just so much more dominant than we've seen in years past, where largemouth were always a factor. Doesn't seem to be that big of a factor anymore, especially this time of year, which is surprising to me because there's been some big clubs won down at Ticonderoga the last couple weeks.
Um, tomorrow's going to be an interesting day, but like I said, I think the weigh-in today is going to be very telling for, obviously, the implication, all the races going on, and uh, the Angler of the Year race is going to shift in a big way today. Well, definitely tomorrow is going to be a lot of questions to be answered early on in the morning vis-a-vis uh, -vis the weather. Uh, we got a great way and a very interesting way in coming up here in just a few minutes here on the hot seat, of course, Alex Redwine having his burst, best tournament of the season. We will be back same time tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern. We will see you then on Bassmaster Live.